Rockies and Dodgers series is presented by Echo Outdoor Power Equipment. And we welcome you inside Coors Field on a Sunday afternoon. Rockies in Lodo for another four games after today. The Pittsburgh Pirates come a calling with Clint Hurdle, their skipper. But first things first, the Rockies looking to take down the Dodgers. They fell yesterday 4-1. to one. As you know, Kenta Maeda was terrific for Los Angeles. The Rock Rockies won 7-5 to five in comeback fashion on Friday. Chase Utley has become a fixture atop this Dodger lineup in 2016. He's off to a very good start at 317 last night. He was 3-4-5. Let's take a look at the rest of the Southwest batting order for Dave Roberts. Corey Seager will bat second. Yasiel Puig, Adrian Gonzalez, Yasmani Grandal watched yesterday. He did pinch hit late. A.J. Ellis did the catching. Grandal back in there in the five spot. Howie Kendricks at third base. Jock Peterson in the seventh spot. Trace Thompson getting the start in left field. And the left-hander, the former Brave, Alex Wood, will be pitching for the Dodgers. Here's a look at the uh, early returns on Jordan Lyles this year. It'll be start number four. Well, I didn't for him, he's been able to get through the lineups a couple times early, but then he's been he's just been falling apart later on in the game. The last start for me was so important for him. Just because the fastball command hasn't been there all season. And part of the reason why, as you look at those numbers, the cutter percentage has jumped up. He has fallen in love with that pitch. The last start against the Cincinnati Reds, just to put it in context. Ground ball to the left side. And the only guy over there is Arenado, but he covers a lot of ground, we've been told. And he has Utley by several strides. Let's take a look at the Rockies' defense, which, generally speaking, has been very, very good, as expected. Gerardo Parra, Brandon Barnes, and Carlos Gonzalez left to right in the outfield. Nolan Arenado, Trevor Story, DJ LeMahieu, Mark Reynolds left to right in the infield. Dustin Garneau has the gear on this afternoon. One thing that you really hope that Jordan Lyles was looking at, I'm sure he was, Jordan, a student of the game, is what Kenta Maeda did yesterday. There's a great play by DJ to get Corey Seager two outs. Because Maeda, the first 13 hitters he faced, Billy, as you pointed out, he threw 13 strikes. Well, and he was mixing in, not only getting first pitch strikes with fastball, he's doing it with curveballs and changeup and talking to the Rockies hitters this morning. That's what they all said. I had no idea what he was going to throw, and your first at bat, you're already 0-1. Jordan Lyles has to do the exact same thing. Here's Yasiel Puig, who has uh, pretty good numbers uh, against Lyles. Four hits and seven at bats, and he gets tied up, and it's now three for three in the early going. First Perfect. three hitters, it's strike one. Well, and I'm noticing already Lyles, and, and what I was trying to say earlier, 22 cutters he threw in the very first game against the Padres. The last game he only threw nine, so he's back to that heavy sinker. And he jammed him again. This is fouled off, so it's 0-2. And, and again, that start in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. We haven't been to Philadelphia. Yet. Yet. That start in Cincinnati. It's another red uniform, all right? You know, one team <laughs> wears red, another team wears red. First pitch strikes 19 out of 25. And here in the first inning, Jordan's picking up where he left off. 0-2 on Puig. And he rides the fastball up in the zone, which may set up that changeup, which is a terrific pitch for him. But some of the numbers, and you know, it jumps out at you. 19 to 25 fastball percentage on first pitch, 82 percent. Be aggressive with with your heater. Be aggressive with the heater, and when you see the opponent batting average is only 118, trust that the the heater is good enough to get big league hitters out. A well located fastball is one of the most difficult pitches to hit at the major league level. One and two on Puig. And did he go? Looked like he did. No, evidently not, according to Hunter Wendell stood down at first. Yasiel yeah, trying to hold up. Man, that's pretty close to being a strike right there. And that's inside. So it's three and two on Puig. to this game is to keep the Dodgers off the board in the first inning. They have scored runs in the first inning in three straight contests going back to their final game in Atlanta. And they've scored 17 first inning runs, which is third best in Major League Baseball. 
Always nice to play with the lead. Lyles trying to prevent that, and he loses Pui. I see a different guy. I just watched Yasiel Pui, and he's been criticized in, in some corners, actually in many corners, especially in Los Angeles, for maybe going a little bit too much to the beat of his own drummer. You know, he was almost like Pete Rose there. He drew the walk, and he sprinted down to first. You see that, Spilly? They're, they've been talking about how he's been getting progressively better and better. You're right. When he first got to the major leagues, he was flamboyant. He was tardy. I don't mind flamboyant, and I know you don't mind flamboyant, but tardy doesn't sit well with, with, a, with a manager, with a coaching staff, with the other 24 guys in the room. Well, and there's a reason why there was some clubhouse problems a couple of years ago. They, there's, he was rubbing people the wrong way, and now... He's starting to do things a lot better. I think part of it comes down to Dave Roberts connecting with them. That's outside, and it's 2-0. and oh. I bet you that Adrian Gonzalez, more than most hitters in the game, gets himself in hitters' counts for two reasons. One, he has a great eye. But when you have the reputation he does, guys start to nibble. You're scared of throwing a strike to him because he could deposit it anywhere over the fence on the field. And that's outside. So all of a sudden, after two quick outs, he lost Puig, who was ahead of 0-2, and, and now he's 3-0 and on Gonzalez. You don't want to create traffic. Challenge with your fastball. He's probably swinging 3-0. Ball four. And now you have an issue. Lyles is cru cruising along through the first two batters, and then you lose Yasiel Puig. And now you put yourself in a situation where you're not happy. This is, Grandal is a very good fastball hitter. He's been hitting the ball hard since the start of the season. And for some reason, Walt's coming out. Trip Gibson's the home plate umpire. And I have no idea what this is about. The crew chief, Hunter Wendelstead, is going to join. Any guess? I'm trying to read lips here. It'd be great, but we can't see Hunter's lips moving. Now, thank you for backing up. Could be one of those things you're asking if it's uh, if the pitcher's allowed to go to his mouth. Sometimes with the temperature, you can get that. I have, I have no be, idea. But, but it would be. Far too long a conversation yeah. for that. And it's 62 degrees. So, you know, a little breezy today. Not as warm as it was yesterday, but we'll find out later on. Here's Grandal. And that's now seven straight pitches out of the strike zone. A lot of times, if a pitcher is not able to find his release, Point a catcher will call for an off speed pitch. 2 0. And the reason being, with Jordan Lyles, he does have a curveball, and catchers will call the off speed pitch just so he can get the release point out in front so the pitcher's not throwing behind the baseball. But if you're sitting at home, you're saying, how can this be? I mean, he pounded the zone the first two guys, and, and now he can't find the zone with his fastball, and it's 3 0. And this has been one of the perplexing things about Jordan. You'll see two innings where, you know, short, quick, and dominant. And then the third inning, he'll go out and, and walk two guys. Well, he, he's done it within one frame here. Couldn't have pitched to Utley and Seeger any better. And he was ahead 0-2 also on Puig. That is way outside. He just walked the bases loaded. Foster's jogging to the mound. It's inexplicable, isn't it? It's hard to watch because you're you're wondering what's going on in his mind. You wonder if he has a blister on his finger. Or Did he develop it between, between the O2 yeah, pitch and the? That's that's I mean, what's the, it's it's weird.
Howie Kendrick comes up. Yeah, I'll give you by example or as an analogy Friday night John Gray gave up two home runs in the first inning three nothing you, know, you walk off the mound you're not happy about it but at least they swung the bats to do that I mean, if you give up a hit right here you're down two nothing and it's self induced well, that pitch had some anger behind it and some intent 95 miles an hour one and one and there's what looked like another cut fastball. Three walks have loaded the bases with two outs. Puy, Gonzalez, Grandal all on. That's down the line and out of play foul. One ball, two strikes. Eric Young looking on, and this ball is slowly hit. This is a tough play. Out at first place, Nolan got him. For a moment, I thought his best play may be to go to the plate and get the force. But he got Howie Kendrick, and he's going to get uh, a big attaboy from Jordan Lyles. Dodgers are hanging around. They want to see a video review potentially look at how fast Nolan is getting to the baseball and nobody's better in baseball than the barehanded play throwing on the run quick strike to Mark Reynolds who is shown to be a magician at first base being able to stay on the bag well, I got to look at that again Take a look on the super super mo. The Nolan good, with as the we throw. always say with these, the good news is that it's so close. The good news is he was called out on the field. Dave Roberts still hasn't made a decision. Glove, I think he's out. Dave I think said that one. Bring him in. Yep, that one shoot showed it pretty conclusively. So another great play. You know that stat that's been. All the rage for analytical followers. Defensive run save, DRS. Nolan near the top in baseball. Chalk up another one right there. He just saved a run with that brilliant play. So the Rockies, when we come back, we'll have the bats in hand. damage done and now they're ready to go offensively against the left-hander Alex Wood and the Rockies have a new leadoff man today he's been hot coming off the bench Brandon Barnes turned into a new Mr. Late Night for the Rockies here's the Southwest batting order for Walt on a Sunday afternoon Trevor Story back to the spot he has started in all but one game the two spot then Cargo Nolan Arenado Mark Reynolds will bat fifth today Gerardo Parra after that DJ will bat in the seventh spot and catching and batting eighth Dustin Garneau 
Well, Alex Wood with those numbers, not very good numbers, has not pitched very well since getting traded from the Atlanta Braves to the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's really scrapped his four-seam fastball. He's now going to more of a two-seam curveball mix. Hitters are hitting 469 against Alex Wood's fastball. He's all arms and legs. He's, he's herky-jerky. Did you face it? You didn't face him because he came up after you left, right? Never faced him. Very herky-jerky. Probably a little difficult to pick up, right? You would assume so, but a guy like Nolan Arenado says he sees it just fine. But I think Nolan sees everyone just fine. It's uh, somewhat accurate. Nolan, three for nine, two home runs against Alex Wood. 1-1 one, one to Barnes. Good eye for Brandon. Let's take a look at the arsenal for Alex Wood. What's impressive to me with the pitch arsenal, his curveball, he throws it 30% of the time. Hitters are hitting only 0-59 against it. He wants to get to that pitch. But he has to be able to throw the fastball to prove that the hitters will lay off of the curveball. Two and two on Barnes. Drove in the only run last night in his only at bat with a double. He had that booming triple. Give the Rockies a 7-5 lead on Friday night, and that would be the final score. The Rockies would love to see some sort of produ production coming out of the leadoff batter. Just not a lot so far this season. 181 batting average. And leading off the game, the Rockies are hitting 125. Only two for 16. And Barnes strikes out on the curveball. One out. <laughs> Dodgers have made one change in left field. Trace Thompson's getting the start out there. Josh Peterson and Yasiel Puig join him in the outfield. It's Kendrick at third. Corey Seager, the young shortstop. Chase Utley, the 37 year old, in second. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Yasmani Grandal's behind the plate. Trace Thompson told the story the other day. He gets this wherever he goes. Boy, your brother can really shoot it. Younger brother, Clay Thompson. But where it is, Steph Curry will play in game four for all you Golden State Warrior fans. Probably still room on their bandwagon. Strike one to Trevor Story. Infield straight up, outfield pretty much straight up for Story. One ball and one strike on Trevor. Son of a firefighter. Can you guys the see Dallas, how, Fort Worth area. how far Jock Peterson is out there? Yeah, that's a called strike. He's deep. A lot of everyday center fielders play more shallow. He is way out there. And the same pitch that got Barnes. Alex Wood has been able to command the fastball so far today, which sets up that curveball. The start of the day, only an 0.59 batting average against the curveball. It's going to drop down. And you're right, there is deception with his mechanics. You see on the Subaru Super Mo, that's a well located curveball diving underneath. Trevor Story's hands. Cargo had one of the Rockies' hits last night. They ended up accumulating six despite being no hit for five and a third by Maeda. Cargo hit a rocket at Chase Utley. It was the hardest hit ball off of Maeda. And then later in the ball game, he had the infield hit. It would be a one, two, three start for Alex Wood. He said afterward, he goes, that's baseball. They even out. No scores. We go to the second.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Echo Outdoor Power Equipment. And by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Another good crowd on a Sunday afternoon. The Rockies unbeaten on Sunday so far this year. If you look at a historic Union Station, 2-0. Top of the second inning, bottom third of the order for the Dodgers. Jock Peterson, Trace Thompson, Alex Wood to face. It's Jordan Lyles, and he misses ball one on Jock Peterson. And it's 2-0. and oh. Jordan's win last week before that. Hadn't had a win since April 23rd, 2015. And then eight starts from that time to the, his win. He was 0 5 with an 8.35 ERA. And it's 3 0. Well, this is, you know, frustrating and tough to watch. And I'm sure it's uh, just as frustrating now for Jordan Lyles, who somehow has lost his release point. Walked three guys in the first inning after two quick outs. Kind of guides that one over. It's 3 and 1. 27 pitches, 16 balls, only 11 strikes. We always talk about it. Is there a guy who takes a bigger hack at baseball? No, but what's interesting is before the games, Jock Peterson is with the Dodgers coaching staff playing Pepper down the left field line, an old game that Players used to play. I've never seen a major leaguer play in Pepper in, in a long time. I noticed that. And there's the fourth walk. I noticed that. And uh, I was going to ask you, uh, did you ever play Pepper when you were in the big leagues? I hadn't seen a game of Pepper at this level before. <laughs> and for the audience at home, a game of Pepper is you get a group of guys, maybe two or three fielders, and you stand about 15 feet apart. And he just lobbed the ball to the hitter, and the hitter works on controlling the barrel and hitting a ball to each guy. And to answer your question, Drew, the answer is no. I never played Pepper at the major league level. Remember they used to have the signs around baseball or softball fields that say no Pepper? Yeah. They don't even have those anymore because nobody plays nobody Pepper plays anymore. It. It's all because of the signs. Turned so many kids away, they said, oh, well, we can't play Pepper anymore. That game's not allowed. 1-0 on Thompson, 1-1. One one. Garneau calling for a curveball. When you see a guy, a pitcher, losing control of his release point, you'll start seeing catchers calling a lot more off-speed pitches. Hoping that they'll be able to find that release point and then get the fastball back. One one ground ball to third foul. Trace and Nolan spent a lot of time with each other. They work out together in the off seasons. They've known each other since high school. Their families are very close. Talked to Trace the other day and his mom and Millie Arenado had breakfast the other day. As Thompson's mom came out to see him play here in, in Colorado. Watch her young son against the Rockies two and two Trace reminds me so much body type and, and when you see him play of Drew Stubbs I think the he can have a ceiling of Drew Stubbs which I think is great 20 homers 20 stolen bases type of player but will also strike out quite a bit of times. Drew Stubbs now with the Atlanta Braves made their club out of spring training. <laughs> because of the four walks you start think I know it's early you start thinking about pitch count. Tyler Chadwick gave up three runs in four innings yesterday. Not awful. 
but he was gone after four innings because he lacked great command. He threw 95 pitches in four innings. And the Rockies are a little thin in the bullpen. I'll tell you why here in a second. That's a base hit to right. Peterson is going to go first to third, and Thompson in a second with a double. Trace fouled off a couple pitches, 2 2 count. Gets a fastball that runs up inside. He's able to pull his hands in and hit it opposite field. Jock had to freeze because the ball was hit right at him. Gathers his feet and is able to stay in the third base fairly easy. You can see Trace running around the bases. He can fly. And this is going to get a run home. They'll try to get the runner going to third. Thompson, smart move by Story. He crossed over and a good read by Trevor Story. So a run batted in for Alex Wood, his second RBI. It's 1 0 LA. Not a good read by Trace Thompson being able to run right in front of Trevor Story. It is a high chopper towards Trevor, but with the pitcher hitting. Stay in second base, you're still in scoring position. And Trevor doing a good job getting a quick hop and a quick throw to Nolan who retreated back and make the tag. Yeah, that that was a a fortunate play for the Rockies. Another guy in scoring position. Back to the top of the order. Chase Utley hit a ground ball to the left side. The only guy over there is Arenado. Same set up right now defensively for the Rockies. One and one. And you say well there was there was a double there. It's still self induced that run. That runner who scored walked leading off the inning. Four walks. In an inning and a third. And that's pulled foul. We always talk about the difference between hitters counts and pitchers counts. There are two distinctive swing pitches in an at bat as you well know Spilly the first pitch of an at bat. If you're 1 0 last year the league hit 265 when it was 0 1 the league hit 222 so that's a difference of 43 points which is fairly significant. What the 1 1 pitch. Tell you those numbers in a moment. Here's one two on Utley. Now it's two and two. So if the count goes to two and one, favoring the hitter, last year throughout baseball, the league hit 248. When the count went to one and two, they hit 175, a 73 point difference. It's unbelievable how important just first pitch strikes are. Back up the middle, and it goes off of Story, and then he threw it. Wide of Arenado. A hard chance and he stayed with it, but he still should have gotten it out once he picked it up. Awkward location for Trevor's story behind the bag. It looked like it took a strange hop because he felt like he had to get the ball in between hops. And then as he chases after it, bare hands it. You see on the Subaru Super Mode, bare hand makes a good effort to get to it. Yeah, he had the pitcher going, so he he had a little more time. He had more time than he realized, and it's going to be an error on Trevor Story. Well, I, I think some of that. I'm not taking Story off the hook here. It's a play he tell you he's got to make, but once once he stopped the ball, it was hit hard. But you see. More inefficiency defensively when they're standing around. Yes, always. If you have a bad tempo, you're throwing a lot of balls right now. It's 22 balls to 21 strikes. That's a lot of standing around. Third error on story this year. Kike Hernandez last night, Kenta Maeda pitching, great rhythm, throwing lots of strikes, made one of the best plays we'll see at Coors Field, an over the shoulder basket type catch to save the no hitter. Here's why 
Rockies. I alluded to this a moment ago that the Rockies are kind of short in their bullpen. Remember, Jason Gurkha, who's kind of working long haul, was sent down to Albuquerque. So the two long haul guys are Christian Bergman. Bergman threw last night a couple mm -hmm. innings. And Chris Russin. Now, Chris Russin was told this morning that he has to be ready to start tomorrow. And you say, wait a second, isn't it De La Rosa's turn? It is De La Rosa's turn, but De La Rosa has been De La Rosa has been under the weather a little bit, and they're not sure yet whether he'll be able to take his turn. Now Russin also told us the strike that if he's needed today, then he will pitch today in a long haul capacity and if De La Rosa can't make his start tomorrow we may come to the ballpark and there may be a corresponding move to get somebody available unless Christian can bounce back fast enough that they that he could you, you can't go into a ball game you don't like to go into a ball game without somebody who could back up the starter and that is the fifth wall and and here's where you are in the game it's a second inning it's only one nothing Walt Weiss is mindful of that, but if you give up a blast all of a sudden or one in the gap and you find yourself down three or four nothing, it's a big hill to climb. And Walt's coming out right now. And I don't know if, it, it, you know what, he's on the job. This is to deliver a message. Every once in a while, Walt has done this in his first three years as a skipper. Any guesses there? Don't lose your concentration. Let's go. Throw strikes, trust your fastball. You got a defense behind you. Little little bit more assertive. In a little terms more assertive, yes. Yeah. It, it was less the, the arm around the, the back and more the kick in the pants, you think? It is. If he had his infield glove, it would have been covering his mouth and he would have been yelling. And the first pitch is locked to left field. Two runs will score. Paris throw won't get the runner there. Throw to second will not get Yasiel Puig, who's now five for eight in his career against Lyles. And all the walks catching up. Three nothing LA. Puig is going to be aggressive in this situation. Bases loaded. Manager just came out and told the pitcher to throw strikes on the Super Supermo. You can see the sinker was not sinking right there. Stayed flat. Yasiel Puig with his pants pulled up. Fires one into left field. And I'm paying attention to see if there would have been a throw to second base if Parr is able to keep the double play in order. And I think it would have been. You'd like to see that throw from the left fielder go to second base. Coming out of spring training, you practice that, practice that, practice that. Don't be enticed to throw to third. I think maybe the outfielder gets caught up, and I got to try to find a way to get an out. Is that the thought, perhaps? Yeah, when you're out there, especially when you're just trying to help your pitcher out. Well, right now, the Rockies with one out and Gonzalez at the plate. They're on the precipice of really digging themselves a hole. Lyles is down three nothing. Adrian Gonzalez has two ribbies out there sound like a broken record when you tell everybody that this guy's an RBI machine. And a ground ball is going to bring home a run. DJ, excuse me, Story will get the uh, out, but another RBI for Gonzalez is 15th of the year, and it's 4-0. Fans join the conversation this year. Send us statements, photos, thoughts on your favorite social media platform. Make sure you utilize the hashtag Toyota Talk. Well, you always start to second guess a ground ball. Jordan does a good job to get Gonzalez to ground, hit a weak ground ball. You wonder if that throw going to second gives you a chance for an inning ending double play instead of it's a run. That's why the little things are so important especially against a team like the Los Angeles Dodgers. You give them extra outs, extra opportunities, they'll make you pay for them. 1-0 on Grandal. And listen, the last guy wants to walk people, you understand this, is just the guy on the mound. I mean, it's not like Jordan Lyles is yeah, he's not, not trying to fun. throw the ball over the plate.
Rondahl hits it in the air to shallow center. Barnes will take a couple steps in, make the catch. Four runs in the inning for the Dodgers. Five walks by Lyles. Sunday at Coors Field and Nolan Arenado will lead things off against Alex Wood in the bottom of the second. Ten runs scored in first two innings this series. Rockies had pitched very well on the road trip from a starting rotation standpoint. Chatwood gave up three and four innings yesterday. John Gray who did a lot of good things. Gave up three in the first inning on Friday. Jordan Lyles gave up four runs last inning. There were only two hits. That's hard to do. That is hard to do. Well, and it also affects the hitters coming up. After a four-run long inning, Nolan's going to be forced to take a first pitch. And Nolan's very aggressive. He's got good numbers against Wood. Three for nine and two home runs. This is July when Wood was pitching for the Braves. This is Wood, the Dodger uniform. Wood, a prod. Pro, excuse me, a product of the University of Georgia. I said this frequently. The Atlanta Braves does as good a job of any team of knowing their area very well. And it's one of the hotbeds for baseball in the country. This ball's launched. It's got a hook on it, and it is back. It would have been nice to see a homer for Nolan, but more importantly for the Rockies, leading off an inning. Rockies are hitting 194, only four walks this entire season. That's a 221 on base percentage. That's last in the National League. And yesterday, leading off an inning, Rockies were 0 for 9. Two and two on Arenado. Mark Reynolds on deck. Fastball's high. Three and two. Nolan is improving so much. Not chasing. Not expanding the strike zone. And his swing percentages, his chase percentages reflect that. Good at bat. So Nolan draws a walk. You want base runners when you're down by four. Well, Mark swing, Reynolds coming up. The swing percentages, the amount of times you swing per at bat. 54% last time for Nolan. This year it's dropped down to 46%. O swing is the swings outside of the strike zone. You can see the numbers dipped quite a bit, 14% this year. And the strikeouts per plate appearance has dropped quite significantly. He has gotten better and better. 
pretty good hitters right there. Adrian Gonzalez, Nolan Arenado. Reynolds at the plate, 0 for 2 lifetime against Wood. He gets a curveball for strike one. Rockies playing their ninth home game of the year. They're 500. They're four and four so far at Coors Field. Well, we talked about that. That has to improve significantly. This gets away all the way to the backstop. So that's big as Arenado will go to second on the wild pitch. Didn't hit me brick, so it didn't bounce back. Did? The Subaru Supermo. Curveball down and in. Grandal's not able to get over. Oh, it hit his foot. That hit his foot, didn't it? Now, why wouldn't Mark say something? I'm almost positive that hit his foot. Because Mark wants to face this guy, and he likes what he sees. Check it out on the Subaru yeah. Supermo. Maybe it didn't. I, I, he, there's no way Mark Reynolds wouldn't have said something. You're talking about two two runners on base. It's a peak on the super super mode. It must have hit in front. Did it hit the front toe? No. It no, back, it hit to, it his hit back to the left. Sliding out of the way already. Yeah. It hit just to the left of his front toe. Two and two. Not gonna lie, in the minor leagues, I've, I was hitting the jersey once and I refused to go to first because I like watching the pitcher. I, it was somebody I felt I could do some damage against. And then I popped up and then I learned my lesson. Always take the free base. Well, you can appreciate wanting to hit, but you also appreciate first and foremost, it's a team game and you're down by four runs. Sure. Sometimes you just can't help yourself. If the guy looks on the mound like he's he's ripe, like he's nice and tasty, you, you want to take your good swings against that. Three and two on Reynolds. Kendrick throws out Reynolds, one out. Nolan's walk was the first leadoff Rocky to reach base since the seventh inning on Friday's game. Fans, did the Rockies score seven or more runs? You know the drill. Go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Lip Boss at Taco Bell. That'll bring up Gerardo Parra. Parra 0 for 3 last night. Did have a hit on Friday night. He's faced Wood once in his career without a hit. With the loss last night to the Dodgers, that snapped the Rockies' five-game home winning streak against L.A. Game three of 20 in a row for Walt Weiss's team. Wood, Yasmani Grandal can't get on the same page. They may be changing sides. Corey Seeger's coming in. Dave Roberts, first year as the manager of the Dodgers. Unique situation taking over a team that's won three straight division titles. It's happened before in the big leagues. Good. 
usually when a managerial move is made you're inheriting a team that's been struggling. They've had a terrific career. Of course, played for the Dodgers also. Since we were talking about Golden State, it was similar to Mark Jackson getting fired. Steve Kerr getting the job. Similarly, in, in baseball, you have the Washington Nationals. This ball up the middle, base hit. Arenado around third. And he'll score easily. Gerardo Parra makes it four to one. The Rockies are able to score on a walk. Nolan Arenado leading off the inning, which we hadn't seen much of before with the Rockies getting a leadoff base runner on. Gerardo Parra, the super supermo, is able to just shoot a fastball right back up the middle. Jock Peterson playing as deep as he is. has no chance at Nolan who rounds third. Not sure what happened to Howie Kendrick in third base. Think He's about this. Fell over. He tripped on his shoelaces. Think about this. There are five runs in the game. Three of the guys that have scored reached on a walk. LeMay, who broke up the no no last night in the sixth inning with a single to center field, takes strike one. If there was ever a guy to get back in the game in a hurry for the Rockies, it's Alex Wood. For a moment, I thought Wood was going to have to be an athlete and actually catch a pop up. <laughs> well, Wood last year in 11 innings pitched 15 earned runs. There's Wood trying to call it off, Howie Kendrick calling it off, Cal Seeger coming in late. Ends up being Chase Utley. Excuse me, Corey Seager. I think I'm going to get that confused a million times. Kyle and Corey, you won't be alone. Here's Dustin Garneau. Nick Conley played last night. That's, that's not going to work. See, I guarantee Adrian's laughing now. We got to get a shot. The Amparo over there. Pretended that that ball got away. Tell me you never got deked on that play. I've never got deked on that play. Thank you. You telling the truth? I, uh, kinda. <laughs> there was a time. Nick Huntley played for Albuquerque yesterday. Got three plate appearances over two and a walk. Played five innings behind the plate. He's going to play seven innings today. Be reevaluated after that. He remains on the seven day concussion DL. Charlie Blackman. Ran today, ran the bases today, feeling much better with that turf toe. Daniel Scalso has been out for a while with the broken hand. 2 0. Here's a video of Charlie working out with Keith Duggar this morning. He looks good. Seems to be running normal. It's always the turn and the stop that plantar fasciitis or, or a turf toe where you'll feel it. Running normal is not going to affect it. It's the stops, change of direction. Three and one on Garneau. Third start for Garneau since coming up when Huntley got placed on the DL. He's got a double in each of his starts. Left center field. And Jock Peterson makes the catch to close the inning. The Rockies got a leadoff walk from Arenado. He would score on a Para base hit. Four to one LA.
Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. By Tavern Downtown. Visit Tavern Downtown after Rockies home games. To get two for one draft beers with your same day ticket. And by Coors Light. Whatever your mouth, climb on. Beautiful look of Red Rocks. Is there a better concert venue in the country? Nope. Not even close. It's the most beautiful place in the world. I love that place. You can also do some uh, training there. Yeah. Got some stairs there. That's some serious high step. And Howie Kendrick, first pitch swinging. And DJ LeMay, who's got it. And Kendrick is in the book one out. Well, if there was ever a guy who was in need of a quick inning, it's one Jordan Lyles. He has walked five in the first two innings. He's given up four runs. Jock Peterson walked and scored last inning. The frustrating part watching Jordan today is that the stuff is good. I'm not seeing a lot of healthy hacks. <laughs> Just so self inflicted. Peterson last year against the Rockies in 19 games, 172 batting average and 64 at bats, but five of his 11 hits were homers. He also had 22 strikeouts. Well, so much of that damage was done in the first half. He was an all star last year. Didn't hit for a great average in the first half, 230, but he had 20 home runs. Second half, he hit 178. <laughs> two and two on Peterson. This ball to deep right, cargo back, and this will sail out. So Peterson has hit his third home run of the season, and it's five to one. Well, maybe the game of Pepper that the Dodgers coaching staff been playing with Jock Peterson is starting to help. A little bit better back control for Jock. He already earned a walk. Lasting against Jordan Lyles and on the Subaru Supermo fastball, not a lot of depth to it. Stayed flat. And the two strikes. Jock takes the normal swing he nor always takes. Hits it a long way. That Palo Alto High School, right across the street from Stanford. Had he not signed, he had committed to play at Southern Cal. Trace Thompson fouls this one off. He's behind 0-2. This one's playable. Reynolds has it for the second out. That'll bring up Alex Wood. Sends a charge and one to deep right field. Cargo near the wall. He's going to play it off the wall and he's going to hold Wood to about a 360 foot single. And I think that right there is a product of the new wall. Even though it hit the old wall, outfielders, they practice this a lot. In the past, you'd go to the wall and try to leap spill. You played a ton of games out there, but Cargo is sure is this. New wall, old wall, and if it is, I just gotta, I gotta play it off the wall. Well, you can see on his route, he chops his steps before he gets to the warning track. 
Outfielders are taught when the ball's hit, try to go as fast as you can to the wall if you think you have a play. Wood thinking maybe he's going to go to second base and has to freeze once he sees Cargo one hop into second base. Utley lines one to left. That's a base hit. Arenado had no chance to leap and catch that, so he quickly made his way to third. And the Dodgers have runners at first and second. And Corey Seager at the plate. Chris Russin up again in the Rockies bullpen. He had to get up last inning. And we often mention this. These pitches in the bullpen count. In other words, they are documented. Russin's hot. He's, he's coming into the he's game. He's coming in, yep. Well, to seen enough. Aaron Holmes keeping track of how many pitches every guy throws when they get up. So Jordan Lyles could not back up what he did in Cincinnati. He walks five, he leaves down five to one in the third. Two thirds. He walked five, and that was his biggest undoing. Gave up a home run in the inning to Jock Peterson. Gave up a long single off the wall to the pitcher Alex Wood. And another base hit by Chase Utley. Corey Seeger up. As soon as Chris Russin can complete his warm up pitches. The Bears repeating. Chris Russin was on notice that he may start tomorrow because. Jorge De La Rosa is iffy with the stomach flu. And now with him having to be utilized in a long relief spot today. It's a likely chance the Rockies will have to make a move. To shore up their bullpen or at least to add another pitcher in some fashion tomorrow as they open up a four game set against the Pirates. So Seager. Ground ball to second and a walk and a run scored steps in with two on and two outs. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Kyle Seeger's five for 16 with runners in scoring position in 2016. A 313 batting average. Russin in his last two games, six innings pitched, two hits, no runs, three Ks. He has been effective. And he hits this ball really well right center field. Cargo giving chase, can't get there. And this will score two runs. Utley trailing Wood will score, and it's a triple for Seeger. And the Rockies trail at 7 to 1. Those runs will be tagged to Jordan Lyles. Russin left on left. Trying to get inside on Corey Seager. Throws a cutter or a slider that stays middle middle. And Seager with a nice, quiet, good short stroke drives it to a very deep part of right center. Cargo gets a quick 
throw into Trevor Story, and you're looking at a 7 1 lead. Yasiel Puig walked in the first, a two run single in the second. Ball, one strike on Puig. The number one truism has been and will always be in this great game of baseball for all of the gifts of a guy like Yasiel Puig or Nolan Arenado or Carlos Gonzalez and how they can get us out of our chairs with long balls or great throws. It's all about pitching, particularly starting pitching. And the Rockies have a mountain to climb. They're down seven to one as we go to the bottom of the third inning. One and two for the Rockies. Chris Russin will be first, and Brandon Barnes and Trevor Story. Drew Goodman, Ryan Spielborg's Mark Stout. Steve Foster, the pitching coach, visiting with Dustin Garneau, who's doing the catching today. Strike one from Alex Wood. Ball one strike on Russin who can swing the bat. The old chip away, Spilly. That's I imagine what guys are saying at the dugout a little bit. You say you score a run in inning. Score running inning from here on out, and you're 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 winning this baseball game. Russell never swung the bat, which he likes to do, and he's got three strikeouts for Alex Wood. Looking to come out to a game? There's always great Rocky tickets of deals available. So bookmark Rockies.com/specials and check back throughout the season. You know, one of the top prospects in the Rockies organization. Jeff Hoffman is off to a great start in Albuquerque. He is pitching today because I know he was he was aligned just the way it worked out with with De La Rosa. And so some people at home may be saying, "Well, 
you know, could Hoffman make that start if De La Rosa's stomach flu so bad that he can't go uh, tomorrow. But he's on the hill right now, and he's pitching well against Las Vegas, giving up a run in the first uh, three innings, or four punch outs. A 2 0 record and the 162 ERA. So in a tough, it, it's Billy, you know this, in a tough league, not just in Albuquerque, every ballpark you go to in the PCL is a hitter's paradise, and a lot of them are elevated. You know, Colorado Springs is elevated, yep. Albuquerque at, at altitude as well. Reno, so, Reno Salt Lake City. I mean, Cashman Field in Las Vegas, oh, oh my yeah. goodness, is that a hitter's paradise? It's a great place to hit. Well, and if you're following along with the Albuquerque Isotopes pitching rotation, Shane Carl throws for Albuquerque tomorrow. So if the Rockies needed to do a starting pitcher for whatever reason, if you're looking at the AAA roster, Shane Carl would be probably your next available pitcher. But you have to look at who's on the roster, who's not on the roster. There's a lot of decisions to be made if you're going to go with that route. And, and what Spilly's referring to is the 40-man roster. That's uh, slowly hit, and Wood, he's an athletic guy, feels his position well. Two outs, Trevor Story coming up. There's a player's not on the 40-man roster. You have to take them off the 40-man roster, and then you expose them to the other 29 teams. Much easier to make a move with a guy that is already on the 40 man. Story struck out on a curveball his first time up. there one and one we're talking about ERA and you know, teams that pitch well starting rotations that pitch well you win year after year after year it's why the Dodgers are typically in it back up the middle wood got the leather down and it's a one two three inning top six ERAs last year by team in major league baseball Cardinals, Pirates, Cubs, Mets, Dodgers, Astros. They had one thing in common. All were in the postseason. One and a special guest is here, none other than Mark Sanchez of the Broncos. First time at Coors Field? First time at Coors Field, yes, sir. You were surprised when I said this is the third oldest park in, in the National League? I really was. I really was. I've been to Dodger Stadium, obviously, uh, being from SoCal, but this is beautiful. Yeah, it is uh, It is age well. So what's the story? You guys have conditioning this week? Uh, yes, sir. We started our first week last week of uh, the voluntary off-season program and uh, got started with our strength staff and Luke Richardson. And, um, you know, we got meetings with our 
uh, offense coordinator, defense coordinator, special teams, those kind of things, and individual meetings with our position coaches. But uh, we got a bunch of linemen out here enjoying some. Uh, do I need to go down? Do I need to go down yeah, the line? Go down and say hello to him. All right, I'm going to go down. You, you guys have to inter intro yourselves. Yes, yes. Well, um, this is this is this is what the quarterback said. What? You guys got to introduce yourselves. Go ahead. No, no. Is it? Am I getting the offensive line like? Uh, so this is Matt Paradis, and he started more games in the National Football League than anybody else. Played more snaps. I'm going to introduce you to him. Matt I know Paradis. he's from San Diego State. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Boys. Oh, oh, I knew it was Mountain Well, well back. <laughs> so who else? Matt. Matt. Ty Sambrelo. Oh, Ty's from CSU. Yeah. Uh, I dabbled. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and? Sam Brenner. Thanks, Sam. Ross, right? Because I met Ross earlier. Ross. From so. friends. From friends. <laughs> what was it like when you found out you were going to be with the Broncos and be a quarterback in this in this organization. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled. Yeah. It's a uh, pretty cool opportunity. Very special. And uh, <laughs> you, excuse me. That's all right. It's, it's that time of year. This is the time. No, of, but this is, uh, you guys having fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's got to be exciting to just, you know, the draft's coming up. Things are starting to tick again. It's uh, it's a great place to be and a great place for a quarterback. Um, I think they're doing uh, a wonderful job with uh, with all the acquisitions and uh, free agency moves, and I'm sure they'll do great in the draft. <laughs> There's a double play at the end, man. These guys are tough. So, so I'll I'll echo what they said. Welcome to Denver. Thank you. Thanks for coming on with us. So, Drew Spilly. Hey, Mark. I yeah. have a question for uh, well, you, you for Sanchez. You got a question for Mark? What yeah. is it? Uh -oh. Does he have a baseball background? Any baseball in your background? Oh, very little. I would relief pitch in uh, in high school. Right after uh, s football practice in the spring, they let me come throw a couple <laughs> innings and be in every batter. It was bad. That was it, like BP or whatever. Just no, well, just come in like yeah. towards the end of the game. I'd run over from football practice, literally hop the fence, throw a couple pitches, and be done. Mark, so ask him about game. his brother Nick playing with Nomar uh, Garcia. Park. Ryan Spielborg wants to know about your brother Nick. Played maybe played with right. Nomar. He did. He oh, did. Okay. They played together in Whittier when they were uh, young kids, uh, probably five years old to ten, maybe. But uh, yeah, Nomar was a heck of a baseball player, and they were real close growing up. And you you recognize Nolan's name right away. You were like, oh, Absolutely. I think I know Nolan. Uh, Nolan uh, played at El Toro, a rival high school at Mission Viejo, so he couldn't get into Mission Viejo. That was the knock on him, but he ended up making uh, a great uh, career for himself yeah. in baseball. Yeah, quite. Kind of an understatement already, his young career. Any other questions for anybody? Drew, Spilly, no? No, no one says no. he super, super. does love USC hey, though. Yeah. Hey, you listen, know, if he's going to knock Mission Viejo and El Toro, he said, you know, Nolan was a USC fan, huge USC fan. <laughs> Nolan's a USC fan, so I'm passing that along. All right. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys. All right. Of course, he was going to go to Arizona State. No, Nolan was, yeah. Yeah. No, he's a huge USC fan. Russin strikes out Kendrick to end the inning. And we will go to the bottom of the fourth inning, 7-1 Los Angeles. As Mark Sanchez in the big uglies up front look on.
Bruns, bottom of the fourth inning, Cargo, Arenado, and Mark Reynolds against Alex Wood. Wood, a second round pick of the Braves out of the University of Georgia in 2012. Eight player trade last summer brought him to LA. Finished the year 12 and 12, 189 innings combined, 32 starts. Inside ball one on cargo. Overall, he had a 3.84 ERA, which is you know very respectable. But 4.35, surprisingly so, pitching with the Dodgers, half your game at Dodger Stadium. This is going to be a tough chance for Utley, and he tried to scoop it to get it there, and that didn't work out. So an infield hit for Cargo. Just the second hit for the Rockies. The Coors Light Cold Hard Facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. How about this? The top home run hitting third baseman of all time. This is their first 418 career games. That's not some arbitrary number. This is how many games Nolan's played. 281 average, 77 home runs, 260 ribbies. So how does it compare? Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt, three more home runs, 20 less ribbies, less of a batting average. Eddie Matthews, 276, 108 home runs. And more RBIs. He was a Hall of Famer. Santa Barbara High. For he, went, he went to your alma mater. Yep. Different, different, named different after graduating classes, though. Yeah, much different. We didn't graduate at the same time. Yeah. Chipper Jones, Adrian Belcher. The point is that Nolan's numbers compare very favorably. Nolan got the barrel on this, but just missed it a click. Peterson in center, cargo tagged up, but Peterson throws the ball well. One out. Now bring up Mark Reynolds. Schmidt, by the way, would end up with 548 home runs. Eddie Matthews, 512. Chipper retired with 468. Beltre still going strong. 416 home runs just past Daryl Evans, who played third base with 414. Um, Beltre also just signed a two year contract extension. We'll see Adrian in a little while. The Rockies played the Texas two step this year at the Rangers. Two here and two down in Arlington. There's a strike on Reynolds. Broke his bat and a ground ball to third in the second inning. Eddie Matthews not necessarily the most famous athlete to come out of Santa Barbara. No. With all due respect also to Ryan Spilboy. Yeah. No, not. But there's been some other athletes of, of high caliber. My favorite one is a former NFL quarterback, Randall Cunningham. He went to UNLV out of Santa Barbara. Or Santa Barbara stopped playing football years ago, eh? No, they're still playing. You see Santa Barbara. No, that's what I'm talking playing, about. UCS. Santa thing. Barbara High, yes. They stopped playing. Uh, you see Santa Barbara stopped playing a long time ago. Back in the 70s. Outside, three balls and a strike on Reynolds. The two hits for the Rockies are owned by two lefties. Para, an RBI single in the second up the middle, and then that infield hit by Cargo. You look at the, the only run scored by the Rockies. Start with the leadoff walk. Cargo with the leadoff base hit. We haven't seen much of that in the last couple days. Rockies with leadoff hitters getting on base. So you're hoping Cargo can find a way to come around and score. Run it inning. Now let's play. How well does Billy know his high school? How many major league players have come out of Santa Barbara High? Jesse Roscoe, Port Phelps, uh, Dylan Axel. Strike three what? called on uh, Reynolds. What a surprise for him. Up in the booth, the pitch looked up and elevated, and on the Subaru Supermo, you can see Osmani Grandal reaching up for it. 
The strike zone is from the kneecaps hollow, the hollow of the kneecaps up until the letters of your jersey, but it's rare that you ever see a pitch called above the belt, let alone letter high. Yeah, the strike zone seems to be the the lower portion, you said the hollow of the kneecaps to the belt most frequently. High strikes aren't generally called. So you had Axelrod, you had Phelps, you had Jesse Orozco, who made more appearances than anybody. Eddie Matthews. Eddie Matthews, yourself. Gary Wood. Is he on there? Gary Wood? Gary Wood's not on here. I'm sure he played the big leagues. I'm hoping so. Not according to Dougie's research. Virgil Vasquez. Yeah. That's six. You got two more. Two more? Yes. I'll give you a big hint. Two and oh on Para. Three and oh on Para. All right, give me the big hint. I'm assuming these guys are related. Right, Dougie? We, we can make that assumption. Another Matthews? No. All right, who's the last two? They have to be brothers. Bill and Gene Lillard. Yeah, I haven't met them. Good bad teammate. They graduated a year after you. Really? Liar. 1930s had to be. Yeah, they were in the 30s. 3-1, and that's a strike. Now Paula looks back at the stain at Trip Gibson. Waltz barking at him as well. That ball's down. Hitters will, if you're gonna call the high strike, you cannot call the low strike. That is a low strike. Mark Reynolds' strike was, was up. That's too much part of the strike zone for, for hitters to feel comfortable at the plate. 3-2 in the air, left field, well struck. Thompson going back, can't find it, it almost hit him. Cargo around third. He'll score on a par at double. And it's seven to two. Trace Thompson got twisted around. The ball almost plumped him. I'm looking at the flags and seeing how much the wind is blowing. It is, it is swirling. I don't think Para hit it as hard as Trace Thompson thought. Para squares it up. Trace takes his eye off the baseball, and you're right. Almost hit him right in the back. Just hit a topspin lob at him. Another two-out RBI for the Rockies. Gerardo Parr has driven in both runs. Rockies hitting 309 with two outs best in baseball. And LeMayhew takes a ball. DJ popped to second his first time. For Gerardo, that's his sixth double. Which leads the Rockies. The better numbers in the league. Well, the wind has picked up at Coors Field. Blowing papers around in the booth. And when the wind blows in strong from left field, it tends it to knock the ball down. Just what Trace saw, but I, I've never seen a outfielder misplay it quite like that. So the jet stream now with the wind, I've seen it a million times. It'll fly out to right center. Good eye from LeMayhew. And it's 3-0, and so Wood has really not had the command in this inning that we saw the first three innings for the most part. One or two gift strikes. Well, you look at Reynolds AB, that's a 3 2 caught looking. Very easily, you have first and second, one out. Three and one on DJ. Hitters count. Par at second with two outs. Rockies down 7-2 as they bat in the fourth. 
And that's inside. And now you have another base runner for Dustin Garneau. And all of a sudden the arms are folded for Dave Roberts and he sends Rick Honeycutt out. Fans, suites are still available for the Yankees series June 14th and 15th. Call 303 Rockies to reserve your suite today. The final book on Jordan Lyles, he went two and two thirds, seven runs, five earned. Five hits, five strikeouts, didn't strike anybody out. I got one for you. Yeah, it's two outs. Let's say Garneau's to reach. Russett's on deck. It helps that Russett can swing the bat. It does. But if you're only long haul guy, and he kind of puts Walt in a precarious shot, you take the, the one shot of putting a position player up there this early in the game. I think you always have to take your chances if that's your best opportunity to score. But nobody is up, which is an indication that no matter what, going over to reach that Chris will swing the pipe. And again, it helps. I mean, Russin legitimately can hit. Hit a home run last year in St. Louis, and it was way back. Ball, one strike on Garneau. Hit a fly ball to center field his first time up. Wood had a tough outing in his last outing in Atlanta. Probably a lot of adrenaline that day. Four innings, gave up six runs on seven hits. Walked one and struck out. Excuse me, he. He struck out just one walk three. He's ahead of Garneau, one and two. Yet par at second, doubled in cargo. LeMay, he just walked. There is so much room in right center field. You want him to hit it right here? Right side. I mean, Jack Peterson and Yasiel Kui, you'd have to go through customs to, to reach one another. Well, we know Kui, Jock, I would assume, since they went to Cuba this offseason, they would have their passports available, so should be able to cover that. Be a little bit easier. 2 2 ground ball, vacant area in the infield. Here comes Parra, he'll score. DJ to third, and the Rockies are chipping away. It is seven to three. Nice job hitting behind in the count by Dustin Garneau. Well, it wasn't right center field, but it was close enough. It was close enough on the Super Super Bowl. That fastball down and away. And if you like shifts, you're not going to like the result. Alex Wood doesn't like it. He throws his hands up. That would have been an inning ending ground ball. Sometimes you just overthink it. Well, I'll guarantee you one thing. Chris Russell at the plate struck out looking in his first at bat. And it wasn't that he just looked at a called strike three. He didn't swing the bat at all in his A-B. And this is a guy who loves to swing and can hit. Anybody who watched the Rockies last year knows this to be true. He will not go down looking this time. And he puts a bunt down, a great one. Kendrick can't field it. What a play by Russell. And the Rockies get another run. Seven to four. What a smart play by Russell. Howie Kendrick, a veteran, not a lot of time though at third base. Yeah, I thought Howie Kendrick's only play was going to be at the plate to try to get DJ LeMayhew. Russ and the athlete from Kentucky. Great bunt. Howie's played too far back for a pitcher to be hitting, and he goes with the glove. He's not able to field it cleanly. And it was awkward. It's really off the wrong foot at that point, isn't it? It is off the wrong foot. We, we're just so accustomed to watching Nolan make plays that when someone else makes a play or doesn't make a play, we're, we're wondering why. And now the Rockies offensive hero the last couple of nights. Brandon Barnes, the strikeout and a comebacker so far for Barnes. All of the damage done here with two outs, three runs in in the fourth. 
Barnes drives one to right field and deep. We go back. Leaps makes the catch and gets hammered into the wall. That saved two runs. Yasiel Puig with the defensive play of the game so far. However, the Rockies come up with three and they're back alive at Coors Field. Wow, what a play. Puig, that's as good of a play as you'll ever see at Coors Field running into that wall. Damn. Great play by Puig. Hurt the Rockies with his arm and now with his glove. Four with the three spot, and if not for Yasiel Puig, it would be a one-run game. Look at this catch he just made to rock Brandon Barnes. Oh. Coors Field is now dented with Yasiel Puig. Man. They just put a Puig stamp on the wall. That's how you play baseball. I like how he does it. Barnes luck. You know he doesn't love it, but he respects the fact that that's how you play. You're talking about the tying run at second, probably. I mean, who knows? I mean, if the ball gets away, if it gets over his head, it could be a triple. Doesn't matter. You're talking about a 7-6 game. A runner in scoring position for Trevor Story and Alex Wood is, is now in a real precarious position. But the Rockies did come up with three. Russ in the middle of it offensively with a terrific bunt. Man. What a play. That changes everything. You're right. I mean, that ball, there's not a lot of guys that make that play. There's not a lot of guys that are going to go running into a wall like that to make that play. It's been an enigma at times for L.A., but so far this year, the Dodgers are seeing the best of Yasiel Puig. Offensively and defensively. He doesn't have big power numbers. He had a home run five ribbies, now seven with two today. He's hitting over 300. He's made some extraordinary defensive plays for Dave Roberts. A one on Jock Peterson. It's one and one. Peterson hit a home run against Lyles in the third. Walk scored his first time up. Two and one. Peterson had 26 home runs last year. It's the second most ever for a rookie in Dodger history. The most, Spilly, a guy that will get inducted into Cooperstown this summer. Mike Piazza, his rookie year 93, hit 35. That was during that period you were growing up at the Dodgers had six straight rookies of the year. Let's see if I can name them all. Mike Piazza, Eric Caros, Todd Hollinsworth, Raul Mondesi, Hideo Nomo. Who am I missing? Missing one more. 
Was Sachs in that group initially? Or no, no? Sachs, he was rookie of the year in 83, I think. It was earlier, right? And Fernando was rookie of the year in 81. Not that I was as big to understand. Lead off walk to Peterson. Trace Thompson. Right? McQueen apparently okay. Big as he is, you got to check on the fence. <laughs> the Rockies have walked seven hitters in the game. Russell's walked two now. Lyles walked five. He takes a seat next to Charlie Culberson. Charlie's asking him if he's okay. Yasiel goes, yep, no problem. Where to hit you, underneath. So we're missing one rookie of the year. We had Hollinsworth. You mentioned Hollinsworth. Mondesi, Karras. Mondesi's kids playing now. He's a good player with Kansas City. Really Shortstop. good player. Strike. Oh, and two. Todd Helton told me the loudest base runner he's ever heard, as far as hearing foot hit the ground, all the sounds that a, a base runner makes when they're running towards first. Raul Mondesi. Oh, 2 strike three. That's right there. Thompson's gone. Well, Jeff Houston said the loudest guy was Bo Jackson. You could hear him coming. You want to get rid of the baseball. Let's check in again with Mark. I know you guys are talking about how Bo and Yasiel Puig have some similarities. Well, Yasiel's a popular guy here in Denver. He tweeted this out last night. He kind of crashed the prom of Chatfield, and he got in the mix into a photo, had some fun, so... Fun-loving guy, and the guy can play baseball. Chatfield, Drew, right into the prom. Well, the <laughs> natural question. Is, yeah, the next, the natural <laughs> question is what? Well, that stays fair. Garneau will get the add on Wood. What was he doing at Chatfield's prom? I think it was his Sports Authority field, and why he went over there to just crash it, I don't know. Just have a good time, but this is what well, Puig does. Well, they, they guess. Uh, <laughs> All the Chatfield uh, kids the Chargers, got, got right? a little... Uh, Keith Duggar's daughter yeah. goes to Chatfield High. Right. And when she got back from prom last night, she goes, look, Dad, Yasiel Puig came in to our prom. And he goes, what? Said he took pictures with the Chatfield baseball team. They have a good baseball team. Final four last year in the state. Good team going this year for Matt Johnson. Chase Utley takes strike one. I was just wandering around, had <laughs> nothing to do, ran into a prom at the, the, the old uh, Sports stadium, Authority, huh? yeah. Mom, Dad, yeah, the prom was awesome. We had a lot of fun, great music. Never guess who we got to take a photo with. You never know. It could have been something as simple as someone said, hey, there's a prom. He goes, what's prom? He's like, I'll take you. Let's go see. It's a dance. Oh, and two on Utley. I, yeah, I'm aware of his dance. <laughs> dance. Yeah, but it's been a few years for me, but that's high. What color was your tux at your senior prom? I went like uh, John Travolta from Greece, black with the pink undershirt, pink socks. Really? Yeah. Trying to make another fashion statement. What'd you wear, Drew? I knew that question naturally was coming, I'm, and I'm trying to rack my brain. It was not powder blue. I knew I boycotted that. Ruffled shirt? I'm trying to remember the picture, because it's in my mind. No, with no ruffled shirt. Pirate shirt? Ruffled pirate shirt, like in Seinfeld? No. I might, was it a white jacket? You went uh, white on white? No, it may have been white on black. That's a bad look. I don't remember. 
Your prom was like three years ago. Mine was a little longer ago than that. <laughs> I thought everybody from back east wore black suits and black shirts. Go with that story. One and two on Utley. Swung on and missed. So Rustin strikes out Utley. And the Rockies will get right back after Alex Wood. 7-4. Rockies closed in on the Dodgers. They were down 7-1. Rockies Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. A little bit of a chilly day in Lodo. Partly cloudy. Rockies, with a partly cloudy beginning, fell behind 7-1. It's now 7-4, yummy. When you're a kid, you, never, you, don't get, you don't get cold. You go to school in the middle of winter in Colorado, as my boys do in shorts and a t-shirt. And you can eat ices any time of year. Alex Wood to Trevor Story, and he lifts this ball to right field high, but playable on the track for Puig. One out. So I found out the reason why the Asiel Puig went to prom at Chatfield High. And the reason was I went to talk to Nomar in between innings. He said that Yasiel has a very good family friend, and his family friend has a daughter. He goes to Chatfield High, and he went to surprise her. Oh, well, that's great. See, there, there's the reason. We're trying to figure this out. That's a, that's a nice story. Thanks for doing a little digging on that. And there's Puig. Not in a tux, but no. casual and appropriately attired for a guy that was not actually going as a member of the Chatfield High class. <laughs> right. Cargo and infield hit to start that rally last inning. And he gets the breaking ball, and it's right there, one and one. Cargo owns 19 career home runs against the Dodgers. The only guy active, or guys active, with more home runs. Paul Goldschmidt, 22. Matt Holliday, 22. And Cargo loops this one foul. Tulo also 19 home runs against the Dodgers. And Albert gets to play the Dodgers every year in the freeway series. Looked at the numbers lately, but Albert was off to a slow start. Well, he's coming off of the plantar fasciitis. Dealing with it for almost two years now. Is it the year four of the 10 year deal? Yeah. It's going to be a tough one to see him being productive six years into it. He's hitting 132 with two homers and 10 RBIs right now. Very Albert Pujols. One of the, for me, 
one of the two or three greatest right handed hitters I've ever seen Manny Ramirez would be on that list Albert. Probably be number one. Two and two on cargo and this is a big chopper to short and Seager came up with the short hop to throw out Carlos. The rooftop is the place to be during baseball season. Arrive early for pregame festivities and beer specials before first pitch. It is packed. Beautiful day on the rooftop, beautiful views up there. Rockies mounting a comeback. Nolan's about to hit a homer. Here's the 1 0 to Nolan. Fouls that one off. Seven four Rockies hitting bottom of five. Rolling right on that fouls it back one and two. Changes speeds and he gets the strike out of Arenado. That's not easy to do. Toughest man to strike out in the National League. For Nolan, just the fifth time this year he has struck out. Board, smart stat. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Corey Seager will lead things off for the Dodgers. Today's news and notes brought to you by All Copy Products. Jacob DeGrom, great news. He returned to the uh, Mets rotation today. Most importantly, his newborn son had some issues at birth, but is doing so well that uh, he's home from the hospital. And Jacob was able to get back on the mound. He threw the ball pretty well. He got the victory today in beating the Braves. He went five and two thirds and earned run on eight hits. White Sox turned the first ever triple play. That was a couple days ago. Nine three two six two five. We were trying to come up with the numbers last night. And uh, the original laws of baseball, I guess, was Abner Doubleday. It was Doc Adams who this was just discovered in 1856. And he was sold at an auction for 3.26 million. What are you going to do with it, Billy? Uh, 
my daughter wanted it, so she she wanted the laws of baseball, so we just got it for her. You know, no big deal. That's what dads do for daughters. Yeah, that's what she wanted. One and one on Seeger, a two run triple in the third. And this will be a ground ball to the second baseman, DJ LeMahieu, one out. And that'll bring up the prom crasher, Yasiel Puig. <laughs> Walk, two run single, ground ball to third, and a stupendous catch out in right field. Ground ball to short, spinning, throwing, and a pick by Reynolds. Wow. Puig is out. Beautiful on both ends. Story showing his athletic ability. A lot of athletes on this one play. Puig, great athlete running down first baseline. There's still bits of Puig in the right center field. And Trevor Story fielding it, spinning, throwing. Mark Reynolds with the pick. See the ball, he gets it off the heel, sets his feet as best as he can, and puts a lot on that throw to get Yasiel Puig at first. Talk about a magician at first base. Subaru Supermo. That's where the third base skills pop up. Backhand, foot on the bag. He has been really good at first base. Boy, that was fabulous on both ends. Yeah, both he and Ben Paulson have been picking it. Two outs for Russ in the sixth, and Adrian Gonzalez takes a strike. Do it. Let's not uh, forget about the work of Chris Russin in this game. He came in with the score 7-1, and he's throwing up zeros, giving the Rockies a chance to get back in it. Oh and two. The Rockies bullpen has been in a good place after a very difficult start to the season. Their last six games they fashioned a 169 ERA the league hitting below 200 against them. Two. You know what makes a happy manager? A good bullpen, Spilly. Some of the numbers over the last half dozen. 16 to 3 strikeout to walk ratio. That's good. That's terrific. Plus hits and innings pitch. Only four in runs. Defensive swing keeps Adrian Gonzalez at the plate. And, uh, to me, it boils down to the walks. Only three walks. As, we, as we've already seen in today's game, walks it. Walks just turn around and they bite you. The job Russin did in Cincinnati in the ball game in game two of that series, the Rockies lost four to three. De La Rosa struggled. He went two plus innings, gave a four run six hits. He was out of the ball game. Chris Russin threw up zeros for four innings, just two hits, didn't walk anybody. And the Rockies ended up, they lost four to three. This is bounced toward, <laughs> look at this, once again, and another pick. <laughs> Did we just see that? <laughs> Different guy. Story and Reynolds, in case you didn't believe the first one. What lucky, all skill. This time it's Nolan doing the play. Oh, that was Nolan. I forget, they flipped over. No one said, whatever you can do, I can do also. Well done.
Citizens Bank game recap. Jordan Lyles made the start for the Rockies, and after getting the first two guys easily, really struggled with command. He walked five. He ended up giving up seven runs, five earned. Chris Rustin has come in, done a terrific job, and the Rockies are within three as they come to bat here in the sixth inning. Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parr, and DJ LeMayhew. Reynolds is 0 for 2. You know, so Russell gave him the shot in Cincinnati. The Rockies would close to within a run on a Mark Reynolds two-run home run of the ninth, but he kept them in the game by throwing up zeros. He's done the same thing this afternoon. And we've seen the, the Rockies' offense come alive in the seventh inning or more, so keeping the Rockies within three with four, four innings left to go, you put the Rockies in a very good position. And you don't get there without Chris Russin bridging the gap. Looking up right now to see how many defensive runs saved Mark Reynolds has as playing first. They don't have quite the defensive metrics for first baseman as they do with Let's say catchers and pitch frame. Uh oh, Mark's not going to get happy with no, this. No, because he got called out on strikes by Trip Gibson on a pitch he thought missed, and he thought that pitch missed. You saw on the Subaru strikes on it, looks like it did. Grandal is a very, very good receiver. And that ball is well off the plate. Stole a strike. As a hitter, you're trying so hard to clear your mind, not get frustrated with it. And that is inside. So leadoff walk for Reynolds in the sixth. That'll bring up Para. A lot of movement all of a sudden in the Dodger bullpen. See if that means anything. Walks allowed by Wood. Parr has got him twice, single and a double. He's driven in two of the Rockies' four. I was mentioning how the Rockies were inefficient in getting leadoff men. Why that's important? Well, in today's game, both leadoff men that have gotten on, they've come around to score. Nolan in the second inning. Cargo in the fourth. Hopefully that trend continues. Sort of say, you know, share at hometown. <laughs> Santa Barbara de Zulia. Santa Barbara de Zulia, Venezuela. Marauder signed a three year deal with the Rockies in the offseason. And this is going to kick away from Grandal, and Reynolds moves to second on the wild pitch. I'm telling you, the Dodgers are showing signs of letting the Rockies back in this thing. That's exactly where you want the Rockies to be, picking away at the Dodgers' lead. Curveball down and away. Grandal trying to get his body over to block it. Getting the big part of the chest protector in front of it to deaden it, and it just shoots off to the left. Pedro Baez has pitched at the first two ball games in this series. He's up again for the Dodgers here in game three. Gerardo Parra. When he made his debut, May 13th of 2009, 
he became the 100th player in Major League history to hit a home run in his first at bat. This one is, that's a fair ball, bobbled by Adrian Gonzalez, and Parra is safe. You rarely see that from Adrian Gonzalez, first and third, nobody out. Well, the Dodgers have been playing pretty sloppy so far today, and they're giving the Rockies plenty of opportunities to bounce back into the game. Doc Roberts is walking slowly out to the mound. Curious to see if he's going to bring in Baez or give Alex one more batter. He's going to take Pedro Baez. You can see the ball's hit right off the end of the bat. A lot of English on that ball. Adrian Gonzalez is about as sure-handed at first as anybody in the game. If that eats him up, it's going to eat up pretty much everybody on the Subaru Supermo. You see how high up on the heel it hits Egon. And we're looking back at the Rockies road trip in Chicago and Cincinnati. And my partner Spilly caught up with uh, some good old buddies at Wrigley Field. Mark Stout took a stroll with Tony Walters. We'll also examine Cargo's hot start and give props to a Rockies legend. All of that and more on the club today after the game. We always have to stay at more. It's not just limited to that. There's more stuff. There's tons of stuff. Stuff. Good stuff. Well, Pedro. Baez, who's in the ballgame, has good stuff. He's been busy in this series, and he inherits a mess. First and third, nobody out. The Rockies have the tying run at the plate here in the sixth inning, and D.J. LeMayhew. So all the momentum is swung to the home dugout. Baez, last night, pitched an inning, gave up just one hit, struck out two. DJ lays down a bunt. Bobble, they're not going to get anybody. Run scores. Right now, the Dodgers are a circus. It's seven to five, first and second. Still nobody out. Gotta love it. I just heard a Rockies player in the dugout yell, the wheels are falling off. And you can see it. Dodgers are kicking the ball all around the yard. DJ with the heads up play. He's going to go for the push bunt. Push bunt gives the base runner third a chance to score. It also moves them over to second base and Baez. Guessing that'll be scored a sacrifice RBI E1. We're waiting for the official scoring. Baez. It, it is a sacrifice E1. They gave Para an infield hit. So that's just the first error of the inning, but I'm sure Adrian Gonzalez would admit after the game that's a play he makes virtually every time. Justin Garneau is up. He's the go-ahead run. Another bunt situation. 
get out of play at will. Well, I've been trying to build my argument about why first and second nobody out is such an important time to bunt. And part of the reason why you look at strikeout rates and how often you get a base hit, even if you want to look at the metrics. First and second, nobody out. On average, teams score about 1.4 runs in that situation. You move them over to second and third with one out, it only drops to 1.3 times they're going to score a run, which is great. Russell for the moment's on deck, but you saw Paulson. Rudder's going, and you know what? Trouble getting it out of the glove from Grandon. If Grandon can get it out of his glove, I think he's going to have a chance on Para. He had to reach a second time, and the Rockies pull off the double steal. Everything's working for them this inning. You can see Howie Kendrick's in on the third base. He's showing bunt, so he has to stay and respect the bunt. Parr is sneaking in behind it. Great jump. And I think you're right, Drew. If he doesn't double pump, it's going to be close. Bad throw on the Subaru Supermo. Eats up Howie at third base. That easily could have gone down the left field line. Now and one on Garneau with nobody out. Base hit would tie up the game in all likelihood. So again, that was a, was that a block? No, he stepped oh. off. Adrian Gonzalez comes over to first. So Russell's in the on deck circle, but Paulson's ready to hit. Oh, yeah. Baez has inherited four runners so far this year, and three of them have scored. Not a good rate if you're a relief pitcher. Colorado was down seven to one when they came to bat in the bottom of the third. It's seven to five now, three innings later in the sixth, and there's nobody out. Parr at third, LeMayhew at second. Good speed aboard. Ground ball to Utley would be a fantastic play. Oh, look out. Well, now has to duck out of the way on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Super, super, uh, that's buzzing the tower on Dustin Garneau. But as I've told you before, anytime you buzz someone's tower like that, guess what? Next pitch, you're hyper focused. Shot of adrenaline allows you to see the baseball so much clearer. Two, two. Three, oh. and two. is set. Here's the 3 2 to Garneau. Ball four, and they're loaded up. Russell will walk to the dugout, and here comes Ben Paulson. Good at bat. Garneau was down 1 2. Last year has a penchant for driving in runs. Good with runners on base. In part time duty this year, Paulson has driven in nine. 
nine ribbies and 37 at bats. You got to love that ratio. <laughs> it's a fantastic ratio. Paulson's an excellent low ball hitter. Ball down in the zone. Baez likes his changeup at times. If you're Wall, you like your matchup. Paulson versus Baez. Bases loaded, nobody out. 7-5 LA in the sixth. One and one. Barnes is on deck. Boy, is he ever swinging a hot wand right now. He's already been robbed of a hit today. The barnyard. Outfield has come in a little bit. Peterson, who likes to play deep, as we illustrated earlier, has come in a few steps and he's shaded toward left center field, a place that Paulson goes frequently. I think it's interesting with all these advanced metrics. One of the metrics or numbers I have is. 234 batting average as a team. The Rockies against pitchers throwing over 93 miles an hour. It ranks 20th in baseball. That ball at 96 miles an hour. Carl, infield hit, he's at third. LeMayhew. Reached on a sacrifice bunt and an error on Baez, and then Garneau walked. Run in, nobody out. One, two again. And Paulson is the first out of the sixth inning. It's a perfect uh, reason that every team covets big arms in their bullpen because if the ball's not in play, typically you're not going to get hurt as long as you can catch it uh, with your uh, receiver. And Baez with a big strike out of Paulson there. It's a situation where Baez had to get the strike out, and he does. Now one pitch can possibly induce a double play, and you're out of here in a very sloppy inning, only giving one run. Rockies have to find a way to score at least one more run this inning. Brandon Barnes has been the man in this series. He's had a couple of big hits, almost had a big hit in the fourth inning, if not for an unbelievable catch by Yasiel Puig. He would have driven in two more with an extra base hit. Puig ran into the wall in right field, making a phenomenal grab. Game is tough, but it's one where you're always battling confidence. If Barnes's confidence has to be sky high right now offensively. Good. Quick look at what he's done in the series. The two run triple on Friday night. Last night the Rockies got beat. He drove in the only run. This double was scorched to left center field in the deepest portions of the ballpark scoring Paulson. Southern Cal native has always hit the Dodgers well. 370 in his career. Rockies have three comeback wins already this year. Looking for a fourth. This one would be uh, an epic one. Down six to L.A. with all of the pitchers they can throw at you. Long way to go, though. It's the bottom of the sixth. That's right, Jenny. This is popped up. And this is kind of in a difficult area. Quee finally gets there. He was deep. 
And Parra came down the line. Puig finally let go of the baseball. Now it's going to take a two out hit. It'll be Trevor Story. Story a strikeout, a comebacker, and a fly ball to deep right. Trevor two for his last 18. Be grand time to run into another one. Tied for the league lead in home runs with Bryce Harper at eight. Healthy half there at 0 and 1. He got a pitch out over the plate he liked. You're facing a relief pitcher with a big fastball. You don't have to swing harder. They'll generate all the power for you. You just have to be short to the ball. Take a nice, easy swing. Pedro Baez is ready. Here's the one strike pitch. And those two pitches were in the middle of the plate. You often say, Spilly, as you would know in the big leagues. Get one good pitch in at bat. Story may have had two there. Now you're just going to hang on for dear life and make sure you put the ball in play, especially with the way the Dodgers have been playing defense this inning. Get it in, bait, in play. One and two. Trying to make the Dodgers play, pay for playing a sloppy inning. One, two. And now it automatically Spilly goes back to a fastball count, wouldn't you think? Baez, bases loaded. Think you can throw a slider again, 2-2? Two, two. Yeah, I mean, you're still in a situation with Trevor Story, who's been showing that he'll chase. If Baez feels that that's his best pitch to get the strikeout, he'll throw it. But so far, we've seen he's been throwing the fastball right past the Rockies hitters. Two and two on story with two outs and the base is full. He went with heat and it's fouled off. You always go with your best pitch. Whatever it is you can control, whatever you feel the most confidence with. I think with Baez, it's his fastball. He loves his fastball. And he should. It's 96-97. Trevor Story, when he goes up there, sometimes he's up there for a while. Another 2-2. Two -two. And now it is a full count on Story. And this will help if he's able to hit a gap because Garneau and everybody on base will be running. Got to remind yourself as a hitter here, all the pressures on the guy and the bump. 
3-2, I always sold out looking fastball. If the guy makes a, a pitch with, with an off speed that ends up getting me out, so be it. I'm not going to get beat by a fastball. Here we go, three and two. Sliced foul. That ball at 98 miles an hour. Baez reaching back and getting a little extra on it. The Subaru Supermo fastball. That is on you quick. Yeah, less than three-eighths of a second to make a decision on whether you're firing on that pitch or not. Seven five LA Rockies were down seven one. Bases loaded, three and two on story with two outs. The Rockies had the bases loaded with nobody out. Paulson, the pinch hitter, struck out Barnes, hit a pop to shallow right. Nobody could advance. And here we go once again, three and two on Trevor. Rafael Betancourt said his home in Orlando and Rafi saying boy Pedro Baez works slow. <laughs> uh, rain delay on a perfect day. Three two. And Story hits it in the air to right easy play for Puig. And the Dodgers wiggle out of it. You hope that does not come back to haunt the Rockies. Bases loaded, nobody out. They do not score. Five. There's Paul Emmel. He actually lives in Castle Rock. And I talked to Paul the other day about the UMPS Care Charities, which is going on online right now. He told me what it benefits. We bring out, in the course of one season, over 600 uh, foster kids awaiting adoption in this country. And we bring them out, we give them a big league experience. And, you know, for kids that grow up on the outside of the stadium, always looking at those big walls, it's nice to bring them on the inside and give them a little. Uh, Give them a little taste of the big league life. Um, and, and one of the most important things that they learn is that these players and the umpires, most of us came from humble beginnings just like them. And, that, and that's a really, really good connection for them. So you can go online. It's MLB.com and just look for Umps Cares Charities. It's the eighth time they've done this and it's open until 8 o'clock on Monday, May 2nd. They've got over 300 items you can bid on. Autograph memorabilia, some great trips. They get you into the ballpark and it is for a good cause as Paul Emil said guys so I hope people will do that go online until May 2nd. Yeah that would be terrific anybody can get involved with that cause from Major League Umpires from the Major League Umpires Association 1 and 0 oh, Justin Miller working at Yasmani Grandal 7 5 LA and it's 2 and 0. Oh. 
Third pitcher utilized by Walt Weiss today. Russin, great job, three and a third, no runs, a hit, two walks, three strikeouts. And the numbers thus far on Justin Miller. Well, Miller was having struggles early part of the season, one outing. His last two, very effective. And all comes down to the slider for him. Two and one. Product of Fresno State. 16th round in 2008. Drafted by the Rangers. Is their minor league reliever of the year in 2011. Hockey's got him after he was released by the Tigers organization. Two and two. Is that good slider? Wipeout pitch to righties. That's a pitch he can get right underneath the left handers, left handed batter's hands. They either pull a foul or they swing and miss. And there's the swing and the miss. One out. Well, when Miller's at his best, that slider was going to take a hard left turn down and in. You see the spin on that baseball, a lot of spin. As you watch Grandal just having to pull off because the ball's chasing him. Howie Kendrick's over three, two ground balls and a strikeout for Kendrick. Kendrick just two for his last 22. I'm surprised we haven't seen Justin Turner the last two days. Well, Turner got spiked. When he was at the plate, Tony Walters blocked a pitch and then, you know, scrambling to pick it up, stepped on Turner. Now, he stayed in the game on Friday, but he had damage to his big toe. He is available, we've been told, to pinch hit. Ground ball to first. Paulson, excuse me, Reynolds will run to the bag. Two outs. I don't know if this ever happened in use ability when you're at the plate. Sometimes you get spiked as an infielder with the guy sliding in. There's the block. And you see Walters when he stepped out to throw. Got Turner. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Turner wishes he hadn't seen it before. He's just standing there. Get out of the way. Jock Peterson walked and scored, homered, and then walked again. Third homer of the year for Peterson. Six career home runs against the Rockies. Peterson's brother Tiger was drafted. Did you say Tiger? It's T Y G E R. 33rd round, 2013. It's a pretty cool name. He's a golfer. Um, been injured for a while. A pretty good player with that name. Tiger. It's actually a really good. U.S. ski team members now the head of U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, Tiger Shaw, Dartmouth grad, an outstanding racing career. Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger, probably the most famous. That's ball four. So third time Peterson's walked today. Tiger Shaw took over for Bill Morrall. So with two outs, the man on and Trace Thompson coming up. The Colorado Rockies home run for the homeless 5K is Sunday, May 8th. Go to Rockies.com slash 5K to register today. Now, how many miles did you say a 5K was? 3.1. 3.1. Double for Thompson in the second. Foul out and a strikeout after that.
there's Justin Turner who we were just just discussing he's in the on deck circle for Baez if Thompson reaches Rockies down by two runs top of seven. Swinging bunt. And that'll end the inning for the Dodgers. Stretch time on a Sunday afternoon at Coors Field. LA 7, Colorado 5. And we'll hang around momentarily for a rendition of God Bless America. Fans, please rise as we honor our great country by the performance of God Bless America. Performing God Bless America today, representing the Colorado National Guard's 101st Army Band, is Staff Sergeant Lance Christensen. Please welcome Staff Sergeant Christensen and join him by singing along to God Bless America. the bottom of the seventh the heart of their order cargo Nolan and Mark Reynolds the day after every Rockies win get 50% off your online order at Papa John's use the promo code rocks win at Papa John's .com. left hander is on for the Dodgers Adam Libertor the product of Tennessee Tech cargo and infield hit in the fourth he would score a run he's one for three Cargo takes a strike. Cargo, a 370 career hitter against the Dodgers at Coors Field, including 14 home runs. And this is popped up on the infield. A lot of wind. A 
making the catch is Corey Seager, one out. You just hope you don't look back today if you're the Rockies in the clubhouse after the game and say, man, we had the Dodgers on a treadmill. Bases loaded in the sixth inning, nobody out, a run already in. And they couldn't push, as you said, at least get one. They couldn't even get uh, a run. And this inning's big, the eighth inning's big. And as we've discussed, when you have a, a lights out closer, as the Dodgers do at Kenley Jansen, it shortens the game somewhat. Yeah, you look at it, you have five outs remaining. Seventh inning, you're like, come on, Spilly, there's nine outs. No. With a guy like Kenley Jansen, you, you look at it, we have five outs. That's why we take the Royals the last couple of years. It's really for them a race to be in front after six innings. Yeah, because then you're facing a relief core that never gives up at any runs. The Yankees are going to be close to that pretty soon. Chapman arrives, Tonses and uh, Shelby Andrew and, and uh, Andrew Miller. I'm about to call him Shelby Miller. Looking at the wind, it's going to take quite a few singles and some sloppy defense. Well, the Dodgers have cooperated with the sloppy defense in the sixth inning. Nolan's 0 for 2 and a walk, and he's got a 3 and 0 count. Nolan may throw out one of those rarities. A two walk game for him. And there it is. A hard man to strike out, and he's typically a hard man to walk. So with one out, tying run will come up with Mark Reynolds. Reynolds takes a strike. Mark a ground ball to third, caught looking, and then walked and scored last inning. Rockies have been so good late in ball games, seventh inning or beyond. Last four or five minutes of an NBA game, always referred to it as winning time. Well, last three innings of a baseball game is winning time. And Reynolds drives a single to Puig in right. And a little stop at second. And that'll bring up Para. It's three for three this afternoon. Reynolds has been giving pretty good at bats throughout the day. Slider off the plate, inside out swing and shoots it into right field. Nolan is not the greatest runners in the world. He's not even going to take an attempt to run on Yasiel Puig in right field. Well, league average, first and second, nobody out. League average scores about one and a half runs per this opportunity. A oh, one out. So, about a, a run. We got cargoes. Parr took a breaking ball for a strike. Stay hot, Gerardo. Two runs batted in for him as well today. Parra's double in the fourth inning is sixth this year. He had three doubles opening day. Joe Blanton's throwing now for the Dodgers. Boone Logan for the Rockies. Parra drives it with authority to left. And diving catch made out there by Trace Thompson.
Trace made up for a earlier ball or Gerardo hit to him where he ran back. Wind blew the ball in. Trace showing the athlete that he is. Good jump, good first step. Lays out, makes a beautiful catch. That ball gets past him. You're looking at probably a tight game. So that'll bring up LeMayhew. 0 for 1 officially. He walked and scored in the fourth. He laid down a sack bunt. Kind of a safety squeeze kind of bunt. Run scored and then Baez couldn't handle the bunt. So DJ reached. Side corner for a strike. The Rockies trying to do it again with two outs. They scored three runs in the fourth with two outs. First in baseball with a 309 batting average coming into this afternoon's contest. Rockies with seven hits, the Dodgers with six. 0. Hopefully that's a good omen. The Rockies are 8 0 this year when they out hit their opponent. When they get out hit, they're 0 and 8. Well, the number that worries me today eight walks for the Rockies pitching staff, and the Dodgers have walked five Rockies. So, even though you out hit a team, if you out walk the team, pretty sure the, the record will show that you're not going to win a lot of baseball games. Dramatic shift toward right for LeMayhew. He's used to seeing that, especially inside the NL West. One and two on DJ. The 301 last year for his first career 300 season. So the Cubs won again today. Anthony Rizzo hit two more home runs. Cubs behind Jason Hamill, who's 3-0, beat the Reds 9-0. Rizzo now tied with Story and Bryce Harper for the league leading home runs with eight. Big time power. One and two again on LeMayhew. Two on with two outs. Two and two. You can see DJ LeMahieu and how they shift. The only thing I don't like is the spot right here. That's a normal 6-3, but because of where they're placed, that'll easily scold Nolan and probably allow Mark Reynolds to go first to third. I never like seeing that hole wide open. That stanch in the shadow in the middle of the diamond, does that affect the hitter? It will. You see light, dark, light changes how you can pick up the, the seams on the baseball. And then in a couple of minutes, the batter's box, first on the right side, will be in the shadow. This is the hitter's perspective. Obviously, so you'll see the when the ball is released from the pitcher's hand. You'll see it white and it'll get dark and then it'll be back to white because of the sun. Two two three strike three call. I thought it was going to be called ball three. Instead, he caught the edge of the corner, according to home plate umpire Trip Gibson. And the Rockies leave two more on. They've left five on in the last two innings, and the Dodgers still clinging to a seven five lead.
Here's our Kubota pitching performance. Long haul relief for Chris Russin, and once again, he was special today. Three and a third. The only hit he gave up was a triple. The first batter he faced, Seeger, and that scored two, but those runs were charged to Jordan Lyles. He never gave up another hit. Three and a third, walked two, struck out three. He kept the Rockies in the game. The Dodgers have not had a hit since the third inning. That Seeger tripled their last hit. They're only base runners. The two walks by Russin and Justin Miller with two outs. Last inning walked Jock Peterson. Miller's still out there. The pinch hitter in the nine hole will be Justin Turner. Ball one. Nick Hundley today played seven innings for Albuquerque. He was one for three in an RBI, also had a walk. Came out of the game from all reports feeling fine. 2 0. Oh. Jeff Hoffman started for Albuquerque. Six innings, two runs on five hits. He walked three, struck out five. So through four starts, Hoffman has a 199 ERA down in Albuquerque. And the Isotopes won six to five. That's in there, two and one. Another strike, two and two. Well, so far, between the reaction of DJ LeMahieu last inning and Justin Turner in the last two strike calls, I don't think it's the strike zone that the hitters are having an issue with, even though they are getting called strikes. It's that they're not seeing the baseball as well. That shadow is really starting to creep in. Three and two. I would think, you know, most stadiums around the country when you get into that late afternoon slash early evening it's generally big advantage for the guy on the bump ball four and that is nine walks allowed by the Rockies today Live Rockies baseball is back in 2016 with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live stats, news, and more. Utley coming up, Seeger behind him. You're going to see a left-hander. As Wall will come out and ask for Boone Logan. 7-5 LA, nobody out in the eighth inning, and Turner standing at first base when we come back. This season, you'll have a chance to interact with some very special guests every Tuesday on Toyota Talk Takeover. Some of the top names in sports will take over the Root Sports Twitter account. This week's guest, 
former teammate of Spillies, Josh Fogg. So make sure you tune in and tweet your questions on Tuesday for Josh to at Root Sports underscore RM during Tuesday's game between the Rockies and Pirates. Boot Logan's ready to go. Rockies trailing by two. Nobody out in the eighth inning. Turner just walked. Nine walks today allowed by the Rockies. That is not good. Utley at the plate. One for four. Corey Seeger on deck. See if Boone can get a double play ball. Well, 84 times in Rockies history have they walked nine or more. Rockies record. 10 and 73. And you know when they were in the clubhouse on, the, on those 10 wins after, they said, woo. Yeah, that, ducked one there. I'm going to guess that the other team walked more. Two strikes on Logan. It's good to see that fastball back up to 95. Mixing it in with his good slider. Very difficult at that for Chase Utley, especially in the shadows. You add all those. You're going to get that strikeout. So Logan on three pitches gets Utley one out. Now bring up Seeger. It looked like Logan almost quick pitched Chase Utley. And the slider I was referencing is back. Good bite, good downward tilt. Chase had no chance of being able to foul it off or put it in play. One and zero on Seeger. Chris Hatcher is going to handle the eighth inning for L.A. That's a strike. Rockies in the eighth. We'll have Garneau, the pitcher spot, and then Barnes scheduled. And the strike out of Seager. You can tell, especially left on left, through the shadows. Did not look like a fun at bat for either Corey Seager or Chase Utley. Well, he tried to keep that front shoulder in and not pull out. Seager not able to see the shadow with the shadows, the spin on the baseball. Swings right through two straight sliders. Ball one on Puig, walking a single. His first two at bats drove in two with the single in the second. He was robbed of a hit by Trevor Story in the sixth on a beautiful play up the middle. Also ground ball to third. One for three. Here's the 1 0. And this ball's in the air to deep left field, but it's playable out there for Gerardo. So nice work coming in by Boone Logan. We've said that frequently here in the month of April for Logan. 7 5 LA.
Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By StubHub, looking for great seats, head to StubHub, the official ticket marketplace of the Colorado Rockies. By Scott's Black Magic, darkness for the greater good. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. With Ryan Spielborgs and Mark Stath, Drew Goodman and Coors Field. Rockies trailed seven to one. Put a stop sign on the Dodger offense. And they have closed with it seven to five. They've left five on, however, in the last two innings. And now Garneau will lead it off against hard throwing Chris Hatcher. It's an interesting story. This ball is well hit to left field and deep and off the wall. A stand-up double for Garneau to lead off the eight. Guess he didn't have any problem with shadows. Well, he's been sitting behind the plate the whole time, so he's been seeing every single pitch. But as the shadows in the and the, the shadow starts creeping, getting the hitters more and more in the darkness, you'll be able to see the baseball a little bit more. And Garneau jumps all over a first pitch fastball. Trace Thompson giving chase, almost overruns it. Runs into the wall instead of playing it off, and maybe it would have had a chance at Garneau at second. Ryan Rayburn will be the pinch hitter here, Spilly. Ryan in the starting lineup last night. And he fouls this one off. Hatcher's an interesting guy. Not unusual. You've seen, heard of this happening quite a bit. He was drafted out of UNC Wilmington as a catcher and he was a very good defensive catcher. He was in professional baseball the Marlins organization for five years but he was hitting just 211. Finally they said you know what let's see if you take the gear off and move to the hill. So he did not start pitching till 2011 and he's become a very good setup man for the Dodgers now. So one catcher setting up in the eighth inning. Hands it off to another catcher that closes in the ninth. Kenley Jansen, same story. And that's fouled off. The Rockies four out of 11 with runners in scoring position. Dodgers only two of eight. Well, the Rockies clearly have given themselves an opportunity here the last few innings. The Dodgers were complicit to a certain degree in the sixth, but the Rockies missed that one big hit or even a productive out in the sixth inning. They had a run in, bases loaded, nobody out, and did not push across a run. And they left two on last inning. Two on, one out last inning. Parra robbed of extra bases on a great catch by Trace Thompson earlier in the game. Barnes robbed of extra bases that would have produced a couple runs on a great catch by Yasiel Puig. Can't forget those two defensive plays. One and two on Rayburn. where a middle infielder comes in the runner on second they're changing signs that was Adrian Gonzalez what was that about you think he's telling Hatcher to get after him come after the hitters it's hard to see trust your stuff bounces that one up there and Garneau dives back in a little panic <laughs> touches the old man I can't get picked off can't get picked off in this situation you're you're down two runs Garneau reading dirt ball. He's trying to get back, trying to get to third base, but not a situation where you want to ever get thrown out. I don't think Grandall would have had a shot. That would have been, that would have been awful. Two-two. Up the middle, base hit. That'll score Garneau. Stu Cole sends him home. It's a one-run game. Off the bench, Ryan Rayburn coming through. Chris 
Christian Adamas will run for Rayburn, who's battling a sore quad. Look again. Rayburn looking fastball after Chris Hatcher just spiked a curveball straight in the dirt. Rayburn battling through those shadows. You can see it's not even easy to see on the replay where the ball is coming from. Chase Utley immediately putting his hands up to let Jock Peterson know, throw it to second. Don't try to throw anyone out at home. And Rayburn fired up because now the Rockies are only down one. So Adamas in to pinch run. Rockies have only Tony Walters left on their bench. And there's the buck by Barnes. Kendrick. Is he on the bag? According to first base umpire Hunter Wendelstead. Might as well challenge it. Utley stayed on the bat. Why not? Kendrick comes running in. Chase Utley is going to have to cover from second base. It's a long run, and the throw looks like it pulls him off. Blows. Oh man, I think his toe is off. We'll get another look from a different angle. Here he is reaching for it. Ball is in glove. It's really hard to tell. I think he's still on it. It's worth the challenge though at this point in the game. So they will look at it in a one run game. Regardless, Adamas is at second with either nobody out or one out. And Story and Gonzalez approaching the plate. Not at the same time. But Quick decision for them. You're out. Oh, that didn't last very long. <laughs> so a sack bunt for Barnes. You talk about the beauty of this game and how cruel it can be and how you got to, as Flint Hurley used to say, got to shower well and move on. Ryan Rayburn yesterday, 0 for 4 with the Golden Sombrero, four strikeouts. Today, he gets an opportunity, and he drives in a run behind in the count to make it a one-run game. Got to have a short memory. Or no memory at all. That, that's helpful. Story 0 for 4, two for his last 19, chance to tie it up. Or more. Uh oh. Oh boy. We're in the inside move. And had Utley been near the bag, this is the smidgen late timing wise breaking with Hatcher. They'd had a play on Adamas. No reason to get a big, big secondary. You can take, take a secondary, but after you make sure that the pitch is going to the home plate, EY after that play looked at Adamas. Called the sell down. It's okay. Just relax. Billy, one thing Adamus is here, he wants to be aggressive enough that on a dirt ball he can move up because we've watched Hatcher spike a couple of breaking balls already. Well, it gives the hitter a sense that if he can't control the off speed pitches, as we saw with Ryan Rayburn in that previous at bat, you just hunt fastball. It's a big fastball, but just look for it. 1 0 on story. 2 0 on story. Chris Hatcher came into the series against the Rockies in seven and two thirds of an inning, only giving up one run. This series versus the Rockies in one inning pitched, he's given up three runs already. Dave Roberts has gotten Luis Avilon up and Joe Blant. Avilon, you got to believe, for cargo. 2 0. 3-0. Nobody wants to win this game. It's been a strange game. An inordinate amount of walks. The Rockies have walked nine. The Dodgers have walked five. The Hatcher's on the precipice of walking another. And I thought a 3 0 count was almost an automatic fastball. Evidently, I don't think so right here. If you're worried about Story, he's read what he's done so far this year in his rookie season. 
Fire away. And that is the sixth one by the Dodgers. So two on for Cargo, and here comes Dave Roberts. Hatcher walks off and when we return from break it'll be Luis Avilon against Carlos Gonzalez the Rockies within a run. Warming up to face of two on and one out. Rockies with a run in already in the eighth. Here's our century link link to what's next. The Pirates are in for four games Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. Here are the pitching matchup. Jeff Lock, De La Rosa scheduled. Felt better today. He's battling the stomach flu. He's still 50 50 whether he makes the start tomorrow. Garrett Cole with the big arm. He'll go on Tuesday against Chad Bettis. That'll be a really nice matchup. John Gray, Jonathan Neitz, the former Met, and our old friend Juan Nicasio on Thursday. Now with the Pirates. He was with the Dodgers last year. He'll go against Tyler Chatwood Thursday afternoon before the Rockies head off to Arizona to begin a 10 game road trip. First things first, the Rockies trying to erase a six run deficit and steal one from the Dodgers on a Sunday at Coors Field. Avilan, his numbers this year, four times he has encountered Cargo, and he's gotten him out all four times. Well, this is the matchup Dave Roberts wants right here. You want Avilan versus Cargo, and Cargo this season hitting only 2-11 against left-handed pitching. One for four today. From the sunlight to the shadows. I think with the shadows and with the shift and with the left on left the way cargo has been hitting lefties. I think the left side of the field opens up nicely for cargo to punch it over there. This ball pulled to the hole base hit Adamas around third he's got a green light he'll score gets past Queen Story's going to be able to score cargo on his way to third the Rockies have taken the lead. How do you like that? What is going on? The Dodgers have been an enigma on defense today. They've made some sensational plays and they've made some flat, awful plays. That was awful, and the Rockies have the lead. Wig, who's been involved on a positive side a couple of times in this series, in his haste to get to the baseball, let it go under his glove. 
And Story, who's the fastest, Rocky with score standing up. Colorado eight, the Dodgers seven. They'll walk Arenado to make it first and third. An RBI single for Cargo. Again, the Rockies, if you're late to the party, we're down seven to one in the third. I mean, this game has had it all. If, if you're looking at a sloppy game that's fun to watch, it's been today. Yasiel Puig, hero about two innings ago, running straight into that right field wall and yeah, we flat seen, out missed it. Spilly, we've seen the good and the bad from several defensive players for the Dodgers. Adrian Gonzalez with, with the misplay. Adrian Gonzalez is a brilliant defender. He had a misplay that would ultimately provide yeah, yeah. a run for the Rockies. Trace Thompson saved two runs with a diving catch, but he's he's had a couple of strange routes in left field today. Yeah. And we know of Puig's catch earlier in the great throw two nights ago. Well, it's called a snake, and you can see the the kind of plaid grass cuttings that's on the field. The ball will move, especially when the ball is traveling slow. And it moves just enough that it goes underneath Yasiel Puig's glove. I've had it happen to me several times before. It's not a worse feeling than trying to throw somebody out at the plate and then start sprinting backwards to go pick it up. Real quick, I got one for you. You want to talk about element of surprise. You got a left-hander on the mound. You have decent speed at third in cargo. Push you have Mark Reynolds. Squeeze. Everybody, I mean, Mark Reynolds, big power guy. It's probably the last thing Avalon's thinking of. Ball one. That's the first three walk game of Nolan Arenado's career. He stands at first base. Rockies trying to extend the lead. Talking about how rare it was for Nolan to have a two walk game. It was his eighth two walk game of his career. He had seven multi homer games. And now you just add the wrinkle of a first three walk game. His on base percentage is jumping up. 2 0 on Reynolds. And Mark now looks at ball three. Oh, man. You have Para on deck. Dodgers to try to give the game to the Rockies for a couple innings. The Rockies finally taking it. Ball four. Now they're loaded up for par. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that is, I got to keep track now. That's six, seven, that's eight walks for the Dodgers. The Rockies have walked nine in the game. They're not going to, you know, put this in one of those time capsules, throw it into the future for some. Uh, Unsuspecting uh, Usually it's baseball one fan at 2,512 to go look at. <laughs> Usually it's just one team supposed to wash it off. You don't expect both teams to wash it off. <laughs> yeah, you're not sending this thing into outer space. No. But if you're shaking hands at the end of the day, you will take it. 8 7 Colorado. Bases loaded. One out. Here's Para. And that's a line drive, base hit center field. Here's Arenado around third. Throw to the plate by Peterson. Not gonna get him. Rockies lead at 10-7. What a ball game for Gerardo Parra. Four for five. The only time they got him out was that diving catch by Trace Thompson. Parra left on left, not afraid to swing at first pitch. Avilon just walked Nolan, just walked Reynolds. And Para looking for a pitch up. Quickly gives the Rockies an extended lead. Falls off the plate. Just puts it in a great spot. Not only a four hit game for Para, a four RBI ball game for Gerardo. Rockies not done in the eighth. They've already put up a five spot. 
Sit back and enjoy it. We're back in 90 seconds. Nine unanswered runs. And the Rockies still hitting two on, one out in the eighth inning. Gerardo Parra, four hit, four RBI ball game. We get tacos thanks to Gerardo and his friends. The Rockies have reached the uh, magic number of seven. Don't forget to go to your participating Taco Bell locations tomorrow. Do it between four and six to receive your Rockies taco special with Moss at Taco Bell. Rockies with 10 runs on 11 hits. They've kicked it one time. Seven runs, six hits for the Dodgers, two errors. And the big five spot here in the eighth after the Rockies left five on their previous two innings. Ninth man to hit in the inning is DJ LeMayhew. 0 for 3 and a walk, run scored, RBI today, and a stolen base for DJ. This is bounced to Blanton, and they'll turn the double play. Five runs in the inning for the Rockies. And now they're three outs away from an epic comeback against the Los Angeles Dodgers in front of almost 36,000. Cargo with the big hit and then the misplay in the outfield. And Paul has been shooting line drives everywhere today. 10-7 Colorado got to love it. Rockies have a 10 to 7 lead over the Dodgers. You hear the exclamation point in my voice. That's because it was the Dodgers with the early 7 to 1 lead. The Rockies nine unanswered runs. And that is how we get to this point. Should be a fun toy at a post game coming up. The Rockies, they need to hold the Dodgers here and hopefully a series win to talk about. We'll see you right after the game. Drew and Spilly, we'll send it back to you. It's been interesting. It's been a blast. And now the Rockies are looking for three outs from their closer. Jake McGee. 
Jake is four forward save opportunities. You'll see Adrian Gonzalez, the switch hitter Yasmani Grandal, and the struggling veteran Howie Kendrick. Tell you what, this game is not where it's at if it isn't for Chris Russin and Justin Miller, Boone Logan being able to hang on to the to the zeros. The Dodgers haven't scored since the third inning. Boone stands to get the victory. Jake McGee get three outs. Gonzalez today, 0 for two and two walks. Brought a nine-game road hitting streak into the ball game, and one of the best road averages in the game at 4.38. And he goes to lay down a bunt with the left side open, and it goes foul. It's a savvy vet move right there by Adrian Gonzalez. Jake McGee not a comfortable at bat for a lefty with the left side of the field wide open. Dodgers need base runners. Find a way on. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't have done that if it's a one-run game. No. And McGee, who's got the big fastball, but worked on his breaking ball, his curveball, in spring training quite a bit, and he's thrown more of them this year, at least by percentage, than he's done in the past. Ground ball, that's going to get through. Now it's a 10 game road hitting streak for Adrian Gonzalez. Lead off single. And Grandal will come up. And for Yasmani, this will be his first at bat from the right side this year. Well, based on today's game, you know this ninth inning is not going to be easy. No, it's just it's one of those days where nothing's <laughs> been easy for either team. We'll just hang on. Watch what happens. That misses on Grandal. Most switch hitters struggle to stay sharp from the right side everyday switch hitters because there are fewer lefters obviously. Rondal was hurt early on. This ball's in the air to Cargo in right if he has a play. Look out. Into the stands. Did he catch it? Yeah. Now is he okay? We don't even see him yet. He's out, and Cargo, we think, is okay. Keith Duggar's down there, Mark Reynolds, Walt Weiss. He's pointing to somebody. I, I think he heard a kid. I think he ran into a little kid. And what a play. I mean, you talk about, I'm getting the baseball regardless. That was Nolan-esque from last year. And, and Cargo, this is home field. Cargo knows that wall's coming, and he knows he's going to get low bridged by it. Fantastic effort, fantastic play. You're just hoping nobody else got hurt. You hope Cargo's okay. You hope whoever he ran into is okay. Unbelievable play, Cargo. Got a baby. Cargo giving all the effort you could ever ask for from a superstar. Tries to turn his body into the crowd, makes the catch. Tumbles into the crowd. Boy, that is one heck of a play. And there are the little kids right there. He tumbled. Ooh, that's, why the Cargo, that's why Cargo was down. I think he's concerned. I think he, with his foot, spikes, caught the little girl. What's going on? He didn't catch the baseball. Now they're saying he didn't catch it. Oh, oh 
Oh, he didn't catch it. And they're saying no fan interference because it took place inside the stands. Still an unbelievable effort. Wow. So after about four or five minutes, we resume a one and one count on Grandal. And McGee hits the zone. 94, it's one and two. One, two. Oh, well, Car Cargo is lying there, checking on the little girl, and also somebody put the baseball back in his glove. McGee honing in on Dustin Garneau. Rockies up by three in the ninth. Breaking ball. Curveball's fouled off by Grandal. For a pitch that Jake McGee doesn't throw too often, that curveball is proving to me that it's a very, very good secondary pitch. Takes a lot off of it. 75 miles an hour, it's a pretty big differential between his curveball and his fastball. Also changes the eye level of the batter. It remains a ball and two strikes. Nobody out, lead single by Adrian Gonzalez. The first hit for the Dodgers since the third inning. Early on, it looked like it was going to be an ugly Sunday afternoon at the yard for the Rockies, down 7-1. to one. Jordan Lyles was gone after two and two-thirds. Gave up five hits, walked five. Ground ball to third. He's getting out. Good feed. Nolan just made sure, and so did DJ. They got an out, one gone. Rondal trades places with Gonzalez, and Howie Kendrick will come up. Nolan takes the backhand, sets his feet, and makes a strong throw to DJ. DJ's considering making the turn. But doesn't take a chance to throw a ball away. Knowing with Grandal running down the first baseline that he didn't have a shot, wisely decides to hang on to it. Kendrick's 0 for 4, and Howie takes inside. The Rockies were down 7 to 1. They're up 10-7. They came from behind twice on Friday, but they didn't have quite the same deficit. Really 3-0 deficit and a one-run deficit later on. Rockies with 10 runs, Spilly. They've also left nine on base. Kendrick with a base hit. First and third, and now that's going to bring the tying run up. In Kike Hernandez, who's going to pinch hit for Jock Peterson. Well, the super is super mode. That fastball misses, sees too much of the plate. Middle part of the zone. Cargo sprinting to his left. Has to leave his feet just to block it. Make sure Howie Kendrick doesn't get to second base. 
See Carga doing everything he can with his body to prevent that ball from getting past him. Keeps that double play in order. It would not shock me with a left-hander going for Pittsburgh tomorrow for Cargo to get his first day off, especially in light of the events here in the ninth inning. Rockies in the midst of playing 20 in a row. Kike Hernandez, dangerous hitter. High ball one. Trace Thompson is behind Hernandez. Two on, one out. the one up that's right Hernandez started last night was 0 for 3 in a walk got a couple home runs eight driven in this year hitting 325 Rondals at third and Howie Kendrick at first One one. It's two and one. And McGee falls behind three and one. Strike zone. What do you think? Is Howie Kendrick going to be moving on this? 3 2? He's not, and it's ball four. Wow. You said it. The way this game's gone, nothing was going to be easy. Rockies with a three run lead, and McGee now has loaded the bases with one out. Guy who rarely walks people, walks the pinch hitter Hernandez, and Trace Thompson is at the plate. Big brother went for 23 this afternoon as Golden State blew out Houston. Dodgers and Rockies fans now going back and forth. Now Garneau's got to go out. This is uncharacteristic of, of McGee. This is a guy that was acquired for two reasons. He's got nasty stuff, a great track record in Tampa as part of the offseason uh, deal the Rockies made with, with Tampa for Corey Dickerson, but he's a supreme strike thrower. I mean, the strikeout to walk ratio is enormous. Uh, last fastball was at 92. It's not where he's typically sitting at. He's at 95, 96. Ground ball to short. Could be two. Bobbled by Story. They get one out. And DJ got spiked badly by Hernandez. Boy, that was Taylor made. And now Walt's going to go out and see. Because remember the rule. If you slide past the bag, if the legs are above the knees, the umpires and it's reviewable can look at it and say nope it's a double play. Walt's talking to Paul Amel. He's, he's looking where the tire tracks are. This was tailor made if not for a story bobble they're going to turn it over. It's just been one of those games nobody has made the clean play. Kike sliding as long as you hang on to the bag you're it's a legal slide, sliding straight through it. 
Yeah, that looks to be a legal slide. It's just Trevor ended up unfortunately putting his partner in a difficult spot because he's got to wait and he's got to stay on the bag. The neighborhood play is gone. Well, not only that, Drew, you have to stay on the bag longer. In years past, uh, an infielder would be allowed to move off the bag to protect themselves and the umpire would give them the benefit to allow themselves to get away from a play like that. Now with the new rule, it's rule 6.01J in the MLB rule book. The infielders are forced to stay on the back, make sure they secure the baseball. So a run in, it's 10-8. Look again. Trevor Story having trouble just securing the baseball. That's a double clutch. Wow, we wow, wow. He almost lost it. You gotta love the Subaru Supermo. <laughs> if not for that, you can't. I mean, that almost came out of his glove twice, bounced into his hand, back to the glove, and then he's able to secure it to get the out. First and third, two outs. AJ Ellis pinch hitting in the pitcher spot. AJ hit a home run last night. This has become a game of survival. And that's a base hit to center. It's a one run game. And going first to third is Thompson. It'll bring Utley to the plate. The only good news about that is Utley's left handed. So you go advantage McGee, but Utley has had a big series. 22nd pitch of the inning for Jake McGee. Fastball, center cut. He's not been too fine with his fastball today. The velocity's a little bit down, and AJ's able to get it up in the zone and fight it off in the center field. Trace Thompson easily goes first to third. He's got a one run ball game. Charlie Culberson will pinch run for A.J. Ellis at first base. But Trace Thompson can get off the bag. No one's going to be playing off because of Chase Utley with the left-handed pitcher. We saw a stolen base of home a couple days ago with Jacoby Ellsbury. He almost threw the ball away right there. Oh, man. Somebody bring some sanity back to this thing. We just need one more out. One out. It's been elusive. It's turned into a nail biter. Rockies led by three entering the inning. Here's the 0-1 to Utley, and then time's call, and given late, granted late by home plate umpire Trip Gibson. Utley in the eighth faced Logan left on left and struck out on three pitches. 0-1. Oh, this goes to the backstop. It's going to tie the game. you got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is just the way the baseball games have been playing from the very beginning. It has been one of those games. That's nowhere close. Not that, even close. I Ball mean, gets past him. Trace Thompson, very aggressive, very quick, looking for something like that. No play at home plate. And you have Charlie Culberson standing on second now. Chance to put the Dodgers ahead. The hardest pitch to block for a catcher is a fastball. You're not expecting it in the dirt. You call breaking ball, you're, you, you have an expectation that the ball could, you know, sometimes by design, be in the dirt. That was an impossible one to block. Two and two. Now you got to peek ahead at the bottom of the ninth. 
the Rockies will have Garneau leading off. All that work. And it's now 10 10. 2 2. Two guys up for the Dodgers. Zach Lee, if it remains tied, will come in. Kenley Jansen, if Utley puts them in front. Corey Seeger on deck. Two and two. Garneau sets up outside. And that ball is right foot to right. Dodgers are going to take the lead. Utley's going to head to second with the double. Four run ninth for the Dodgers. And now Zach Lee can take a seat. Now Jake McGee. Suffering through his first bad day at the office in a Rockies uniform. Twenty eighth pitch now for Jake McGee that make that twenty ninth fastball up and in. Utley fouled a tough pitch away, gets one he can handle and drills it to right field. Chase Utley's trademark short swing, quick finish. And that gets right past Cargo, stand-up double. Utley's fired up. Wow, what a game. Quite frankly, what a bad game. Yeah. Both ways around. The Rockies, oh, great comeback on offense, but nine walks. Check it, ten walks. I forgot about the walk to Kike Hernandez. Here's Seeger. So many plays this inning. The mishandle of Trace Thompson, 6 4 fielder's choice. That's a tailor made double play. That, that gets you off the field and shaking hands. Wild pitch. I mean, the near catch in the stands by Cargo. And this is, inning isn't even over yet. But at the end of the day, when you're up three, Plus the benefit of the late afternoon shadows, not an easy time to hit. You got to put that one away. Rockies were down 7-1. Come all the way back, not just to take the lead, but to take a significant lead. And McGee just laboring. Struggling with the curveball. Fastball command's not there. A helpless feeling for a manager. The last fastball was the best one of the day for him at 94. Center field. This is going to score another run. Short hops the wall. Utley scores. Seeger to second. 12 10 Dodgers. They've now put a five spot themselves on the board. Just an awful, awful inning. Walt's going to have to make a double switch. Fastball again, middle, middle. Seeger taking a short swing. Great follow through and drives it to the deepest part of the yard at Coors Field. Opposite field. It's a two out nightmare. Well, it started with the base hit by Gonzalez. Grandal. Hit into a force play. There's one out, one on, no big deal. Kendrick, who's been struggling, gets a hit. Then he walked Hernandez. He had a double play ball not turned. And then Ellis, a pinch single. 
Utley a 2-2 single or double after a wild pitch. 12-10 Dodgers. Can lead, and the Rockies still not off the diamond here in the top of the ninth. Yasiel Puig will be the ninth man to hit. Chad Qualls has now been summoned. You look up disastrous innings in the dictionary, and you're going to find what the Rockies have laid out here in the ninth. Tip. Tony Walters is in for LeMayhew at second base. Well, it's second next inning. A one on Puig. Puig hits it in the air to center. Barnes is there. Now the Rockies will have to rally against Kenley Jansen. They had a 10-7 lead, coughed it up. It's now 12-10 LA as we go to the bottom of the ninth at Coors Field. The ninth inning, Dustin Garneau will be first. Kenley Jansen naturally is out there all of a sudden for the Dodgers. About 20 minutes ago, he thought the last thing he was going to be doing was pitching in this game. League hitting a whopping 103 against him. He had to save last night. So Garneau, then Walters, and Brandon Barnes. After that, Story and Gonzalez at the Rockies can get some base runners.
Five spot for the Rockies gave him a 10 7 lead and then five and two thirds of an inning off Jake McGee. Well normally when I see Kenley Jansen come out on the field I think there's no chance but based on what we've seen today if he's going to blow a save might as well blow it here at Coors Field. This ball game closed in on four hours. Garneau has had a good ball game. Two for three, single, double, RBI, and a walk. Thompson's now in center field. Kike Hernandez is in left. That's 2 and 0. I would agree with you if there were ever going to be a tie, as bizarre as this thing has been, and as Poorly pitched as it's been in some areas. Five walks by Jordan Lyles and a little more than two innings to begin. The Rockies have walked 10 as a team, but the Dodgers have walked nine. Dodgers have played poor defense. Three and oh. Bizarro baseball at Twitter Field today. I felt like I've seen it all at this field. Four pitch walk <laughs> to lead off the <laughs> inning. And Dave Roberts has to be looking at Rick Heinicut and saying, What is going on? Are you kidding me? Did I just witness that? That's exactly what he thought. You said it, Spilly. As crazy as this game's been. Throw up a three spot. Yeah. Laugh <laughs> about it. Yeah. Rockies have emptied their bench with Tony Walters in the game. I'll tell you another thing, it makes that second double by Seeger so big. Anytime you add extra runs, just one run. Because the Rockies right now would be bunting, playing to tie the game again. Walters had to take a strike. And that's Oof. sliced just foul. outing for McGee as the bullpen had pitched well for the Rockies really well in this game and had been pitching well over the last week and a strike out of Walters one out that'll bring up Barnes Jansen with the save last night is 150th career save eight on the season He's allowed only four base runners including Garneau High on Brandon Barnes one and oh well, You look at the advanced metrics and the stuff that they have on stack cast with Kenley Jansen's Cutter, spin rate off the charts, perceived velocity, it means his extension gets out, how fast it looks. He throws it 92, it looks like it's 95. Movement he gets from it. He's been successful 20 consecutive times. One. 
Barnes hits it in the air to fairly deep right center field. A lot of wind, and it's caught one step shy of the wall by Thompson. Two outs. Sounded good off the bat. Jansen, after that pitch, looked into the dugout and, and yelled. Didn't like the location, didn't like that it got hit that hard. He felt like he got away with one. Oh no, looking at how the wind's blowing. The wind may have helped Jansen right there. Trevor Story, 0 for 4 in a walk. One strike on Story. Dodgers outfield playing no doubles. That's an outfielder out here. That's an outfield here. It's an outfielder way out here. Jansen doesn't get a lot of hard contact, so you, you hope a base hit brings Carlos Gonzalez up to the plate. Two. Moving up on the pitch was going now. No stolen base. Ball and two strikes on story. Ball game over. The Dodgers have defeated the Rockies 12 to 10. A tragic, tragic loss for the Rockies. They waste a five-run eighth and a 10-7 ninth inning lead in a game that they trailed seven to one. There are losses, and then there are ones that really bite. And this one will sting for a while. Joe Blanton gets the victory he's two and one McGee takes the loss blown save and Jansen has now saved nine this year at 21 straight going back to last year our Jimmy John's delivery of the game Chase Utley on a 2-2 pitch lines a double to give the Dodgers the lead after a wild pitch had tied it up 12-10 the final. The Dodgers take two of three from the Rockies. The Rockies fall to 509 and nine. The first place Dodgers will head back to LA with a 12 and seven mark. The postgame show is up next.